Uh, turnaround Tuesday. But is it going to turn around the turnaround that turned around on Tuesday? Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning, Bear at Heart. Good morning, Kellark. Good morning, Freighter. Hello, people of Earth. Except Justin Trudeau, according to Freighter. <laughs> yeah, don't plant any flowers into the cat litter box. <laughs> Go to the balcony. There are pots with soil. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We got Parker here today. We got a lot of cool stuff to analyze and talk about this morning. We got a few minutes to the bell, and I want to just cover it. So first, let's just break down the spy real quick. Spy, just kind of a whipsaw yesterday up down breaks the low of the day breaks the high of the day and i i, I feel bad because i was saying yesterday you know it's a, a a big goofer is when they break the low of the day and then the high of the day and that's that's kind of what happens so it's pretty interesting it's one of those markets where they're they're probing for liquidity and what, what what do i mean when i say that well there's a lot of stop orders above the high of the day there's a lot of stop orders at the low of the day might as well hunt all the stop orders above the high of the day. Hunt all the stop orders beneath the low of the day. Do it again and do it again. And then just leave everybody whipsawed. Meanwhile, premium sellers are just making bank. They're just collecting that straight cash flow as the market goes sideways. So pretty interesting stuff on the S&P. Uh, it's starting to actually look a little bit more bearish now. So at the end of yesterday, I was saying, eh, sideways to slightly higher. This morning we might start to be actually potentially breaking down because we still have a series of lower highs in the pre-market. Um, if we do start to break yesterday's high, 349, 65, we could see something up here like 443, maybe even as high as 445. I'd be very surprised if SPY got above 445 this week. And I'd be very surprised on the downside if SPY got been lower than 430, 430. Yeah, so 430 support, 445 resistance, uh, slight bearish lean based off the S&P and what that's looking like in the pre-market. I uh, briefly want to cover Johnson & Johnson earnings. This one's a slower stock, not necessarily a day trading one, although last time they had earnings, I did day trade it pretty well. Um, get big push down, big spike up. Volume and liquidity just doesn't look the best. Did... Wow, that's an interesting spike. There's a dip by probably at 174 on Johnson & Johnson. And there's probably some resistance at 180. Good to see you, Naomi. Yeah, good morning, everyone in chat. I appreciate you guys tuning on in. Good to see you, Ed Ogeta. Good to see you, Pamp and Chef. You see this longer-term recession factor coming into play now? We're in a recession right now, Kellick. Of course it's in play. We're in it right now. Now the question is, how do you adapt and handle it? That's the most important part, right? So I covered SPY, covered Johnson & Johnson, gave some, some resistance, gave a dip buy, but yeah, it's more of an equity type of, type of trade on Johnson & Johnson. What else do we got? We got plug fueling hydrogen to... Walmart, plug power getting a little bit of a pop. I don't think that this gets too far. So I'm not looking bullish or bearish. So I probably just won't trade it. It has space up to 2871. Um, maybe if it gets another resistance, 2929 for plug. Dip buy for plug, 2682. And that pivot is going to have to be risked off of 2645. And these are just general zones. Price isn't going to hit perfectly to a T, although sometimes it will. But yeah, that's that's how I play a plug. Break above and hold above 28. You can go long. If you like the dip buy at 26.82 for the dip and rip setup, cool. I wouldn't uh, go do anything really much lower than 26.44. So, but plug, smaller price stock, so you can uh, take a little bit more options contracts. I might let that set up after the initial morning volatility and plug can probably do pretty well. So that's plug. D by the way, traded plug very well in 2020, 2021. This one was a very interesting one. I remember grabbing some shares in the threes and then just adding on these flag breaks. Look, look at this. 
Look at this. Consolidation. Break above the flag. Add. Add. Raise the stop. Add. Raise the stop. Add. Raise the stop. I feel like I didn't take out a plug until like the 60s. And uh, that was a big, that, it just reminded me of Neo, where it just kept on going. So plug and Neo kind of traded similarly for a while. Now the question becomes, does it continue? Yeah, I think it might have gotten into bubble territory when a stock goes from a buck 80 to 75. But um, we'll see. Good to see you, Golden Horde. Welcome to the stream. Have we officially begun the recession? Yeah, no, the, the sorry, you're the you're the people that tell you that we're in a recession have their lagging indicators. The, the, their lagging indicators haven't told that we are in a recession. <laughs> that's why um that's like that's why uh, cool people like Romulus and I will tell you will be leading indicators. So <laughs> Prepare, prepare, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, right? Buy more Neo today, strong buy at 18. Eruption, I'm assuming you watched uh, yesterday's video where I covered Neo, right? That, that video will help you with uh, the price action today. Go watch uh, yesterday's video on Weenie Trades LLC. I break down Neo in depth. Okay, so we covered plug. Oh, we need to cover uh, Walmart. Let's cover Walmart, WMT. Walmart's kind of in that similar space where it's with uh, Costco and Target going beast mode. Walmart breaking out into all-time highs, I believe. One of the few stocks hitting all-time highs. I don't understand Walmart as well as I do Target. I'm more of a Target kind of guy. But if there's nothing else to get, if there's no other place to go, I should say. Walmart's the, the place. Walmart, nothing too crazy. I mean, there's a breakout on Walmart over 158. You could take the dip by at 153. I don't think that's a good one, though. Maybe there's actually a better dip by at 154.50. Risking that 153. Other than that, though, Walmart, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Let's check out Roblox. I think they were downgraded today. Roblox. Yeah, Roblox getting clapped. Uh, Roblox probably a short. Roblox kind of, kind of reminds me of Rivian. Giving o overcooked. Not doing what it needed to do. Underneath the bold green line. And then clapped. It's only a matter of time before Roblox is underneath that $35 a share. So Roblox, bearish, probably a potential number one, like, short candidate. Um, still eyeing up Target for a long. If we can start breaking 240.80. I am risking the a wick, but that's the liquidity that I need to build the position to bring it up to 245. So Target, another long candidate. Uh, let's check out ADP. ADP, automatic data processing. This one's not too bad, Kellick. Not 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 amazing, not bad. It's pretty consistent with its runs. Look at that. Beautiful run up. Tighter consolidation. A breakout. Couldn't hold the breakout. A massive sell-off. A low, a double bottom. And it's a double bottom because we broke the midpoint of that range. Uh... ADP, I would like a dip by it probably like 220. Potentially even this gap right here, 220.65. That's a juicy one. 220.65, I'll bold it just so it's a thicker level. Uh, a, uh, there's better stocks to trade though than ADP. And then Apple. Apple. Just kind of consolidating. If it can reclaim 165.60, it can probably see something like 167.50. I would not expect it to get above 170 for a very long time. Uh, 160 is the next support zone. Then it's down to 157. That's if this little pennant bear flag breaks bear. 
No way, Naomi. Double shit of espresso. <laughs> That's cool. That's always exciting when you get a new espresso machine. Cuban coffee beans smell amazing when roasting. Good to see you, Mr. N. Uh, hi, what about Intel? What about it? Intel, slower semiconductor type of stock. I wouldn't uh, expect it to go anywhere. I would expect it to probably stay above 45, but stay beneath 49. Not really go much anywhere. It's not a trading stock. I barely call it an investing stock, but it's you could invest in it. Should you try and lower your average on HYMC? You know how I feel about HYMC eruption. I don't like it, so I would say no. Why would you lower your average cost? Just to get a better deal? Just so that they can sell more shares to you and then dump it on you? That's how the market's working. If you want to get off of it, just place your hard stop in the system. I would just place a hard stop at underneath $1.72. And again, I don't want to tell you what to do. I'm just saying what I would do. I'd place a hard stop underneath $1.72 and then walk away. That's it. You're either going to make money or it's going to give you your cash back. And so eruption, it doesn't matter if you're at a 25% loss. The question that you have to always ask is, is do you expect the stock to continue to go up from here or down from here? It doesn't, the, the market doesn't know or care about your position. I care about your position, but it still doesn't matter when analyzing and reflecting it. And, um, Give me one second. I have to get some water and some coffee. I need to play the PAMP song. Post your tickers. Happen. And I'm up. going to be back shortly. Amp it up. Oh. Okay, that's better. Amp it up. Amp it up. Amp it up. Amp it up. I need to. We got 20 seconds to the bell. I, can, I don't even think there's a way I can cancel the song. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, risk management is a thing. Yeah, certainly. All right, so we got the opening bell. Let's see what we got. Again, Roblox was kind of that number one short candidate. Getting clapped right there. S&P pushing higher, nice. I need to organize this. It's kind of weird. GME up on the day, cool, cool, cool. Disney up, but barely. Mm, Target up on the day, 239.84. Again, target over 241. 241 on target. An interesting development. I do like that one, but give it some time. Okay, show me what you got. Okay, target pressing the 240 now. I do still like it. 240.55 on target. There's the market push, pushing. 240.55. Whoa, the ask just came underneath the bid. What the heck? <laughs> the ask just came underneath the bid as soon as I got in. So I'm going to probably... Whoa. <laughs> Let's see what we got. 60 cent wide spreads though, so yeah. A little bit questionable. I'll give it some space, but okay, the market just uh, did a little bear flip. I don't mind adding over 240.74. But again, what's the, what's some other stocks in play? Talked about Roblox. What is, what's relatively weak? What's relatively strong? That's always the question we kind of want to be asking, right? 
240.74, 240.74 right there. And I was going a little bit early at the initial candle break. Oh, uh, Bryce, good to see you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll let that uh that that do its thing. I'm gonna just set like a wider like bracket type of deal. At three. There it is. How's it going, everybody? Uh, yeah, you, it, you if you set a stop, you got to set a good tell canceled. Good tell canceled is the is is how I would uh go about it. GTC. Oh, there's Target going off. Jeez. Trade should be uh, cooking a little bit more than that, but regardless. S&P just reversed. 241 now. Breaking out. Should have been adding, but either way, trade is now going up. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see what we can do. Oh my goodness. Robin Hood is robbing me. <laughs> wow, so there's target breaking yesterday's high. <laughs> okay. There's the market going beast mode. Cool, cool, cool. Certainly going for it. There's the market pamping. Again, just looking for a little bit more now. There it is. Four eight, four nine. Just looking for a little bit more. Again, I'm not super greedy or anything. Gonna survive some pullbacks, but either way, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Market's still pamping. SQ, a really good run uh, off the open as well. Nice, good stuff. Dollar General stock has been on the move lately. Nice. Yeah, DG has been a good one. DG, Dollar General, I believe. DG. Yeah, Dollar General. Very good move. Wow, you're in the, the 190s. Great deal. Great job scooping up a deal. That's what we want to be doing. I love it. Hey, Target just made a new uh, new high. I love it. Come and give me, come, come, and, come and feed. Come and feed my me limit orders. Market looks good. Still just uh, hodling, hodling, hodling. I love it. Great stuff. Just waiting. Just waiting. Staying nice and patient. Oh, it's so close to feeling my limit order. It just it's just sitting there begging to be filled. Begging. Yes. Come to papa. A little bit more. There we go. Two four one nine four. Almost there. Almost there. Two four two oh seven. Two four two twenties. There we go. Two four two twenties. Almost there. Hey, got the fill. Nice, good stuff. So target, achieving target. <laughs> Beautiful move on breakout on target stock. Two four two uh, eighty. That might be a capitulation type of spike, but either way, I've probably helped uh, pave the way for that liquidity towards the upside. And uh, that's just a good trade in the making.
Now let's see what she's got. Show me what you got. I'm glad I uh, just kind of waited on that one. Yes. So that was a really good uh, uh, move, you guys. That That's three points right there. Like, that's no joke. Yeah, that's three points from the entry. That's really good for a, a boring stock like Target because the implied volatility gets jacked up. By the way, good little move. S&P is starting to slowly push as well. What else have we got? What can I do for you guys? Is there any stocks? Diz is load. I think it's right now it's a good buy. Mr. N, I don't think Disney's a good buy. In fact, I shorted Disney yesterday and got some sweet tendies. Uh, today, a good buy for what? You know, that that's, that's kind of my question to you. For what? Like a good buy for a day trade, a swing trade, an investment? Like... What we talking here, you know? What we talking? Look at that. Nailing the, the high on target. Spies just kind of consolidating it up. It could break bear. Time will tell. Time will tell on that. Nice. Up 60%? Wow. That's, that's a nice move, Naomi. Hey, nice good trade. Yeah, NVIDIA was uh, relatively weak, and you're just catching that breakdown. You could take an opening range breakdown underneath 216, 217. That's a good trade. There's an opening range breakdown underneath 215, 58. That's a good trade right there. Nice good stuff. And still going. You might see lower lows on NVIDIA down to 211.78. Tesla just broke the 1,000 level. That's pretty cool. Tesla just did a bearish breakdown. How much follow through does that get though is the question. Okay. Uh, yeah, and an eruption. It's okay. You know, we all we all have made uh, a bad purchase before. But yeah, HYMC is, it's you put in the hard stop, right? There's got to be a cutoff somewhere because if there isn't a cutoff somewhere, it can bleed indefinitely. That's how people get trapped is when they don't set a stop and then they're like, oh, well, I might as well just risk a little bit more. And then it just keeps on dropping. It's relentless sometimes in its pain. Uh, so so you, you're, you're going to want to. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do. If you don't if you like HYMC, you think it's the one go for it. The market is saying it's uh, it's not the one, and they're shorting it right now. So just just keep that in mind. S and P shoving higher. Hey, that's a pivot. That's a higher low pivot from the initial morning low. Tesla did get a decent amount of follow through. It broke down from the 1001. Got to move down to 995. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Not too shabby indeed. But yeah, I would be careful with HYMC. Uh, okay. Yeah, 60% gain. I, I can see that on NVIDIA puts. I am actually curious, though, because I, you are you just going to, like, uh, something super far out of the money? Because a 60% gain is a little bit much. I mean, I'll grab, like, the... Let's grab something reasonable, like the 210 strike put. 
Like the 210 strike put, even at the breakdown, you can get 25%. 25 percent so let's 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 go down a little bit further let's go with the 205 put the 205 put even more out of the money this one that one going up 30 percent still very good still very good 30 percent target's about to make a new daily high by the way the buyers bought the dip on that little three minute pullback now let's see how high they go on this explosion Yeah, NVIDIA is still going. It's a good move. Way to stick with relative weakness. I'm trading effectively. I love it. There we go. Oh, look at that spike in the market. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Woof. S&P going off right now, 239. There's Target new daily highs as well. S&P going off right now to the upside. How far does she go? I want to see how she, uh, she extends. Two, four, five. By either way, there's there's Nvidia holding up. Yeah, there's so there's the S and P. Continuing its breakout, nice good stuff. Cool, cool, cool. So a green Tuesday. Green market Tuesday. I know eruption. Don't let it get to you though. Uh, Mr. M Mr. N says NTR. Is it a stock in play? NTR. Down slightly on the day. An opening range wedge breaks. So that could get followed through to the upside, but it's also being probably dragged up by the S&P. Um, on the daily time frame. One seventeen twenty five. As long as it's above the the breakout area, one oh nine. She's good to go. She's good to go. S and P uh, pamping right now. Nice, good, higher, low pivot straight into liftoff. That's one of those ones where you have to have your finger on the trigger, ready to go. We are hitting short term resistance, but it looks like we're busting through. There we go. A little bit of a bust through, breakout. Um, but yeah, NTR, higher highs, higher lows. I would just trail that thing up. I would just trail that sucker up. Not much to it. Let's trail that bad boy up. <sighs> nice, good move. Okay, an injection of liquidity. Target's barely pulling back while the market is. Very interesting. Okay. Good to see you, Jeffrey Predigrew. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> yes. Well, it, it, I, I really appreciate that, Naomi, but just be careful. I don't want to ever tell people what to buy or what to sell. I can show what I'm doing, but... Just be, just be careful. I'm glad that the, the, you are an amazing NVIDIA trader, though, Naomi. So I'm really glad that it's working out for you. Okay, here comes Target, 24333. Looking for one more press. There we go. 34. Wow. There's a good one. 3.6. There it is. There's the market breaking out. 41, 42, 40. Forty-eight. Wow. Great move. Forty-eight on target. And it's relatively strong to the spy.
filled. Nice good trade from target from the 236. Could have gotten a little bit better, but also I'll just take it. So again, that's going long from the 240.37 and then catching a 1.3% move. It probably still has a little bit of space to go. There she goes. There's the S&P now flagging and breaking higher. So it did run into that short-term resistance and now it's going. I love it. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So eruption, it doesn't matter. If it's gonna be above four, if you're looking at if you're looking at it, if you think it's gonna be above four on HYMC, why not just set some alerts? You think the stock is going to double after getting s destroyed today? Set an alert over 225. That, that way you have at least one hint that it, the buyers are taking over. That way you don't have to watch it or hold it and have opportunity cost in it. That's just my suggestion or opinion. Because then you, you, don't have to, you don't have to sit and have that opportunity cost, right? That's a, the, that's a big part in trading and in life. Opportunity cost. Yeah, it's such a high risk. Yep. Okay, AAL is going to gap up after these mask mandates are out. I didn't know that you knew the future. Wow. Jeffrey Pettigrew, can, can, I, can I have some of that crystal ball? You, 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 AAL is going to gap up? Wow. I, I had no idea that you were... That you were a fortune teller. You know it's going to gap up? Man, what's stopping us from putting our life savings into calls? <laughs> uh, there's a breakout over uh, 1908, over 1912, and then over 1916 today. But be careful saying going to. Eruption, you think NVIDIA is a good buy right now or at the bottom of the mountain? Again, I don't know if you, Do you guys watch my videos? Watch my videos. I want to uh, try and give you the best deals. Um, be careful before you say or think there's a good buy. Okay? Go, uh, go, go watch the weekly game plan. Hey, it's an important one. Hit the like button on your way in. Uh, you can go... You can go where you see my breakdown of NVIDIA. You can see a breakdown on Amazon, NVIDIA, and friends. Amazon, NVIDIA, and friends over here. Go check that out. Again, I'm checking for NVIDIA 160 to 140 as the dip buy. Okay. Googs. Talked about the Googs dip buy. And I'm a bullish person on NVIDIA and Google, and I'm giving these crazy low dip buys. Target's still pressing. I could have done a little bit better on that, but generally you don't get that good of a straight up move at one point in time. Regardless though, hmm, 3.8, 2.8. Okay, $100 left on the table and then 24250, 3.8, 3.5. Okay, 40 bucks. 3 .5, 2 .6. Okay, 40 bucks, 2.6. .5, okay, next time I'll do better. 300, 350 bucks. Hmm. That's fine though. You don't know how uh at any point the S&P can just get cratered. <laughs> As we all know. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Zillasol. Welcome to the stream. Oh yeah, yeah. Cutting losses is a part of trading. Yeah, I mean, you decide how quickly you want to cut the losses, but I'd say you got to have a line in the sand somewhere. You've got to have a line in the sand at some point. I don't care where it is. Just put it somewhere. If you don't have a stop loss in the system, you're just willing to rock those shares to zero. You're willing to rock it all to zero. That's true. Yeah, I know. I know you're not here to convince anyone to buy or sell your asset. I know, Naomi. We couldn't even move Nvidia, even if we wanted to. If every single Weenie Trades subscriber 
all together put their entire like net worths into Nvidia, we'd be able to move it like a penny. <laughs> so there's the breakout on the S and P though, four forties. Wow, nice good stuff. And there's target four four two four four forty eight. That'll be something to mark the trading log in. Mark thy trading log. How long have I been trading? I, uh, I, I've been trading for five years. This is my fifth year of trading. I've been trading live for two and a half years. So half of my entire trading career has all been documented on camera. <laughs> so if you guys want to see any, uh, any streams from early 2020, let me know. If you guys want to see any old clips, just let me know. But yeah, I've been trading for five years. I'm not, uh, uh, so, and here's the thing. I'd say, I, when I say I'm a professional, I am a prof I, I'm a professional in terms of chart analysis and forecasting and all that stuff. I'm still developing as a trader, but the goal is to become a professional trader as well. And I'll say I'm a professional trader when I'm really just, when I, when I make my first million, maybe first million. Technically, I have made a uh, million dollars. The thing is, I've just had, you know, $980,000 in losses. Technically, I've probably made like, probably made like $10 million trading. But I've lost $9,950,000 or whatever. It's, it's, it's interesting because you take revenues minus the expenses. But yeah, good question, Jeffrey. <laughs> You made 10 million, Naomi, revenues. <laughs> so if you, if you add up all the winning trades and put them together and don't count the losing trades, yes, I've made $10 million. The thing is though, is that there's losing trades. There's losing trades along with that, right? <laughs> That's a lot, it's a lot of volume. Yeah. Yeah. Companies rarely go to zero. Yeah. There's a lot more than you'd might uh, think. And it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you can't prove that they'll go to zero until they actually go to zero or slowly go on its way to zero. Hey, nice Keller. Catch your cell. Nice. Did you, did you uh, trade a uh, Twitter long? Basically today was a dartboard green day. So I don't want to say like Target was anything amazing, but dartboard green day today. Twitter, yeah, it comes into the 47 zone. I was looking to short Twitter if we got a pump into the supply zone, but no. Selling your Zen position and making away like a bandit for after acquisition rumors. How do you exit? We got in at 96. Yeah, let's check it out for you, Miroslav. Let's check out Zen, Z-E-N. And yeah, let the uh, hit the like button, you guys. If you guys appreciate these free streams, where I'm uh, vulnerable, hit the like button. It really goes a long way. Zen, wow, nice stuff, Miroslav. In at you know uh, anything beneath a hundred is beast mode. We broke out of this goofy channel. Uh, how would I exit? I would literally, I would, I would put a hard stop loss on half of it just underneath 128. So just underneath 128 is where I put a stop loss on half. And then the second half, maybe I'd run break even. But yeah, nice good stuff. Uh, market's still pamping, kind of going up in a straight line. You know, nice good flag breaks, continuations. The transports are going off, transports 248. We got a... Uh, we got we got a good uh, good move on Square. We got a good uh, good recovery on Roku. Roku, kind of a little curling bull pullback type of deal. Relatively strong today. Could break today's high on Roku. That is a setup right there right now. But the stop loss is underneath 109.79 on that, and that's the tricky part. Uh, what else have we got over here? You know, Tesla, it's chilling in the 10, 16s. Nice, good move over there. It's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. 10, 20 right now. 
Mr. N says, Baba, Baba, what about it? Remember, uh, if, if, you, if you can, if you're going to post about a ticker, just ask, like, ask me like one question about it. You know, what, what, are you, what are you looking for me to analyze on it? A day trade, swing trade, investment, a scalp trade. You know, what, what, what are we looking at over here? But Bob over here, lower highs and lower lows today, a little bit of a, a weenie hammer candle. So it could break today's high, um, especially at the market. The market's been pamping for like 20 minutes straight. Bryce, that uh, target trade ended up working out very well. It just wanted to do a bunch of like shenanigans yesterday, but today, kind of just a straight up move. Well, when I was looking at target, I was like, well, it looks like it's forming a bull flag, and then it broke that bull flag, but it wasn't very strong mm -hmm. on its, it kind of just like petered out. I know, but look at this, look at this flag. That's just a beautiful textbook flag that measures it up to the 245. So next time I will do better holding all the way to 245. I took the profits off at 243.30. But either way, a good move. Good uh, uptick. Um, but yeah, Baba, I'd expect Baba to probably break its day's high, but it's Baba's relatively weak. China stocks are relatively weak. <clears throat> Look at this. Market's having a, having a party right now while Baba is chilling near the lows. You want to be in the stocks that are also having a party. You want to be with the cool kids. You want to be with the fun ones. But yeah, nice trade Miroslav on the Zen position. Your year-to-date year fees must be more, Greg. 10 million in transactions. I do a trade on Robinhood as well. I've got Robinhood. I've got Weeble. I've got M1 Finance. I've got TradeStation. I've got Thinkorswim. I've got Public. I've got, gosh, Coinbase. Coinbase Pro. Uh, what else? What other brokers do I have? So there's a lot. And I've been doing this for five years and take some, some days there's, there's hundred trades a day, 200 trades a day. Okay. Is theta decay happen through market hours? Yep. Theta day, theta decay is compounded each and every second. So the theta that you see on an option that is compounded that that's, that's the, how much gets broken down on the day. So for example, on that target move, the target trade, boy, that, that that 242 call is 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 pamping. Either way, the 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 theta decay on this is minus 0.5. So that means every day that I hold that contract, I have to pay 50 bucks just to hold on to it. And theta is constantly changing as the options constantly changing. So what you could compound that over the course of what, like, let's say the market, if the market happened to be open for five hours only. We, you'd be paying $10 an hour, $10 an hour to hold on to that option contract. But notice how the implied volatility changes. This morning, this contract's going for $170. $170 turns into $430 on target. And that's because the implied volatility was low and implied volatility expanded. And of course, we had the market help with the wind on our back. Yep, as long as a contract is open, data's at work. <laughs> data's at work. And that's why option sellers in the long run tend to win more often because of that theta decay. They're, they're, they're selling you that theta. They're, they're, as they say, positive theta. So if you're buying a contract, an option contract, you are negative theta. So you're, you're paying up to hold on to that valuable right to buy or sell 100 shares of that security. Okay. Doge, you're locked in the Twitter trade because of PDT. Well, you can do it. You can do a ghetto spread, Kellerk, or you can hedge with bear call credit spreads. So, yeah. Yeah. So that, hopefully that answers your question, Dan Critch. Jeffrey Pettigrew, it's your first time on the channel. Well, welcome to the channel. I hope you can uh, find yourself a nice and cozy spot. We're all friendly over here. 
I know that you've subscribed because you have to subscribe to even send a chat message. So I appreciate the subscription. It is free to subscribe and it just helps out the channel a lot. You'll be here more often. A a awesome. Let's not handily have the algo pick you up. Yes, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I've been doing this each and every day for quite a while. Bryce and I, we, 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 we a good team over here. Hello. Hello. Greetings. Sorry, my hair's probably. No, your hair's I beautiful. I brushed my hair today. Do you think I brushed my hair? <laughs> Look at my hair. I, got, I need a haircut, you guys. I'm going to get a haircut. <laughs> we'll get a haircut. Yes. You need a haircut. But yes. Yeah, I wonder I wonder if companies get a bump when they have a yearly anniversary. That's a good question, Moises. I don't know. That'd be some data digging you'd have to do. <laughs> um... Yeah, Jeffrey Pettigrew says, what's your thought on trading classes such as Brett Simba, Kevin Trades? I don't know who Brett Simba or Kevin Trades are. I'm sure that they're great people. Here's the thing with uh, trading classes. All I, I, I would say is uh, just, you know, if you, so first of all, make sure that they offer some sort of like free content. If you like the free content that they give, you're probably going to like their course. Um, I'm, a, I'm in the little boat. I also offer a course. So obviously I'm a little bit biased, but I think that each, each course has something valuable to offer. I've taken lots of trading courses. Every single course from somebody has had something that I've taken away from and gotten good value. Now there have been, there have been other sayings in the past that did absolutely F with my mind and F with my trading. One of those was you can't go broke locking in a profit. I was looking at my trading stats and I certainly did go broke. Uh, taking a profit. So little things like that, little sayings like that, they're contextual. They're not a hard cut rule. So trading's more fluid than you might think. So don't, don't let somebody be a Sith Lord, meaning don't let them talk in terms of absolutes. Nothing's fully black and white. But um, I would say some trading course is better than no trading course. I mean, most people wait till they lose money before they get a trading course. Me included. I, 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 I lost money before I got courses and got an education. Right now I'm getting a professional education. I'm super excited to reap the rewards of those results over time. But some education is better than nothing. Of course, I'd love to have you check out the options course or the beginner course if you're interested in what I have to offer. Free money back guarantee as well. Do they offer that in their courses? Free money back guarantee. Of, out of everybody that's signed up for the Weenie Trades course, and it's been out for over a year, it's been out for like a year and a month, only one person has asked for a refund. And it's just because they were an investor. They weren't a, a trader. And I was like, yeah, no problem. Like they can help with your investing, but this is more geared towards swing trading, learning trading, technical analysis, you name it. Little tips and tricks on how to get filled, how to, look, how to get a good bang for your buck. How to find, how to spot inefficiencies in the option chain. So yeah, that's my thoughts on courses, online courses and stuff like that. Better than nothing, right? Yeah. Yeah, the eruption. You you don't want to buy and hold a, a company, a, a stock. And a company that you don't know anything about. Did you do your fundamental analysis? The, the, the main stocks that I invest in, you know, Target, <clears throat> Google, Spy, you know, I, I just understand it. And it makes sense to me. So, like, I know it would be very difficult for me to just go bankrupt in them, if that makes sense. Tesla's going beast mode right now. Spy's going straight up to 44180s. It needs to chill down for uh, people with iron condors. Either way, target that could be a bull pullback, but yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. Oh yeah, you can use code member. Well, member only works for the options course, and there's yeah. only three codes left. Vimvi says, your, your question might have gotten lost. Quite a while indeedy. It's a good space. Oh, thank you, not me. I appreciate that. 
Okay. Vinvi says, I have a butterfly debit spread for Tesla expiring May 27th. Sell call the 1060, buy call the 1050. Okay, so that's the vertical. And you're buy also buying the 1070? So you're short in the middle strike. No, is it a safe trade? So first of all, no trade is quote unquote safe. But second of all, are you short the middle strike? You don't want to be short the middle strike on the butterfly. Those are the ones where you're you're literally risking like a thousand dollars to make like 20 bucks. But there's a very high likelihood you're gonna make the 20 bucks. The thing is though, do you really wanna hand out a thousand bucks? Can I close it early if Tesla at 1060 by next week? I don't know if you understand that trade because you don't want Tesla to hit 1060. You don't want, well, okay, let's check it out. Tesla, TSLA, Tesla hit the resistance. Okay, let's go over to May 27th. May 27th, let's do this butterfly. And be, be concise with your strikes. It's a big difference if you're buying one and selling another. But let's go over to the 1050, buy, and then we go over to butterfly over here. And I'm assuming you're buying the 1050, selling two of the 1060, and then buying the 1070. Yeah, I don't think that that is ab absolutely correct. Potential interest rate, dividend, or assignment risks exist. Yeah, this should. Is this a debit? Let's see. Let's calculate. Debit, 6,000. Plus 5,000, 11,000 credit of, okay. You might end up taking in a credit with that one. Okay, assuming that this is a normal butterfly, a buy side butterfly, this is fine. I wouldn't even trip about it. But if this is a sell side butterfly, what are you doing? If this is a sell side butterfly, what you doing? Don't do a sell side butterfly. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do. I'm just saying the risk reward is terrible on that. What, 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 did you pay a debit or a credit to get into that trade? That's another question I'll ask. Did you pay a debit or a credit? Okay. Does popularity bring up a stock's price? A little bit. That's why people go and annoyingly pump stocks in different chat rooms. The only thing that moves the stock is the su supply and demand. If popularity artificially creates demand, stock can go higher. You can look at Tesla, you can look at GameStop. Popularity, hype, that's gonna do it. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. All information is free and you have to, uh, have to have a will to work to trade. Finding information is a good start. Well said, Freighter. Yep, even most trading books are free nowadays. From proven trading stars, yep. Hey, I need to do the double. Yeah, double money back guarantee, yes. <laughs> Tips on how to get filled. <laughs> how to get filled. It this is weenie trades. I've got to give you tips on how to get filled. <laughs> Can I please check Walgreens chart for long term? Yeah. Walgreens, I believe, is WBA. WBA. Walgreens Boots Alliance, as they say. Yeah. Nice, good, steady uptrend. Opening range pennant. Now hammering towards the highs. This one's a good dividend aristocrat. Not a good uh, stock price chart, though. Well, isn't Jeremy from Financial Education pumping this or what? Yeah, you can do well with WBA, but I think that there's better stocks. But, hey, you're going to get paid $0.47 cents a share. I don't see it going away anytime soon. But I don't also see Walgreens being here long, long, long term. You know? I don't see Walgreens being here long, long, long term. Okay, uh, Robinhood. You want me to do it on Robinhood? Okay, let's pull up Tesla, TSLA. Tesla. I'm going to trade Tesla options. Market's really pamping right now. It's it's just gone straight up since the open. 
Is that they're 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 gunning for it. They're really gunning for it. It's two in it. Yeah, it's, it's straight up to that red zone. That, that's kind of what I was looking at uh, yesterday, but I guess they just wanted to do it today. One more accumulation day, right? Target going for it, though. That's kind of when you want to potentially start taking profits on call options. We start to see parabolic moves like that. But nonetheless, you want me to show you it on, on, on uh, I don't know what, first of all, I don't know why the hell you do a butterfly that's like expiring like two months out. Unless it's a wide weighted butterfly. Otherwise, butterflies, you always want to be doing shorter dated because they, they're just so small. So like, for example, I prefer a shorter dated butterfly on Tesla. Buy the 1050, sell the 1060, buy the 1070, and then edit the ratios. Sell two of the 1060 call. Sell two of these bad boys. That costs you 50 bucks. You're risking 50 bucks to make a thousand. Well, you're making 950, but you turn a $50 bill into $1,000. If Tesla closes right at 1060 this week, do you, does that make sense? Why you only want to be doing butterflies short dated? It, it makes no sense to try to pin the tail on the donkey when it's like two months out. So for example, at the end of May, why would you want to do a butterfly at the end of May? That's that. That's like you're just asking for just uh, a, an ass whooping. Uh, 1050 by 1060 by the 1070. Edit the ratios, and let's sell two of the 1060 strike calls. Look, this costs more money. That shouldn't be a credit. See, that's that's why that's why I was getting tripped up because I was like, it shouldn't be a credit. Still should be a debit butterfly. But <laughs> if you want just a, a free trade. I guess if you can get filled on that, let me know if you get filled on that. If you get filled on this, you just found an infinite money glitch. You just, you just got paid $82 to make potentially a <laughs> thousand. I don't know. I don't think you can get filled on that here. Let's, let's change this. Kick continue. Let's type in one and then 0.5. It's, 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 it still won't allow me to do a debit. Here we go, debit. Go back. There we go. Now I, I've, I've artificially jumped up this butterfly. So now I, I see, I don't know why you'd want to pin the tail on the, on, the, on the donkey a month later when you can pin the tail on the donkey three days later. So. Do it now. Pin the tail now. You could pin the tail now. I, I don't see a point though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> So Tesla, resistance right at the high of the day. Spy, starting to near the, some of that supply. <clears throat> no, do not double money back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How Weenie Trades went bankrupt. Everybody purchased his course and then asked for the double money back guarantee. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Wow, Weenie Trades is uh is selling out. Where we got we got 10 billion sales. <laughs> and uh they all they all want their money back times can, two. I mean, if you can quadruple the income that the sales bring in, then it would be so bad. <laughs> if I quadrupled the income from the sales bringing in, I'd still just be break even. <laughs> oh no. Really? Ah. Uh, do you want to swim today? I do want to swim today. When do you want to swim? There's an 11. What's market cap? Yep, as Honda Moose says, total market value of the company. Pick out of those three times. First, second, or third swim time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Market cap, total market value of the company. That's a, that that's um potentially why some some stocks get into valuation concerns. Their market caps just stupidly too high to justify the valuation. They may be great companies, they may have great business models, they may have good cash flow, but if they're way too overvalued, they're way too overvalued. You know.
Okay, so hopefully that made uh, sense on that butterfly lesson, right? Yeah, checked Walgreens chart for long term. Did that make sense to you, Golden Horde? I guess I gave my opinion on Walgreens, not a, not a technical analysis of it. Did break today's highs, as we talked about. Um, yeah, pennant pattern. It could be bullish if it breaks 47.14 and holds above it. 47.14. Market's still up pamping though. The short sellers are just like, ow, ow, ow. Dip and rip for NVIDIA as well. Nice, good recovery there. Okay, you got a debit of 20, not free. Yeah, that makes sense. I would be actually concerned if you got it for free. Otherwise, if you did get that trade for free, we found an infinite money glitch and <laughs> literally just go crazy. Yeah, should we allow members to post links? Oh, of course. Members, it, when in doubt, give, give, allow more power to members. Which, by the way, you guys join as a member if you want to see me... If you want to see my proposal to Bryce, if you want to see lots of, uh, if you want to see, Swimming. if you want to see Zonked Peter, yeah, if you want to see Zonked Peter, I mean, that that one that one we should probably turn into a uh, a short Bryce because that would be great for search engine optimization. <laughs> <laughs> so when anyone can see Zonked Peter, yeah, there will be. Uh, we're still in the process of getting Vegas Vlog Part Three. And then Florida Vlog, part one. The only one. Yep. Okay, the only one. Dang. You don't wanna. You you won't wanna miss it. Also, for members, I do post my best trade setups. Again, we talked about. We talked about. Uh, the, I, I give I give, give a presentation right here. It's an unlisted video. I give uh, some trade setups over here. We talked about natural gas breaking out. We talked about some of the early bearishness in the market before it happens. And just members only pictures and videos and links and fun stuff. You can cancel anytime. But hey. Oh, yes. You can send me a progress of your workout journey so far if you want. Yes, I would love to, Dynasty. Yes, leave a comment on everything. Comments help. I love your interaction. Peep. I love seeing different people's journeys. There we go. It's a market potentially putting in a lower high, potential lower low incoming. Target didn't nail the top, but I got out pretty at a pretty good spot. 243.80. Not too shabby. 243.80. Plus the implied volatility is high, so that's part of my stuff. Yeah. Yeah, my humble opinion. HYMC is worth its current price and not much more. Yeah, it's difficult to say. Could you lose more than 20 bucks if Tesla does not hit by expiry day? Is that your max loss? Uh, first of all, do not trade any butterflies if you don't know if you don't know the answer to that. So I'm going to scold you first. Don't trade on any more options if you don't know the answer to that. And the second answer is yes. However, if you don't close that before expiration and Tesla closes at some weird price, where your long strikes are in the money and your short strikes out of the money, you could get awkwardly assigned, but you likely wouldn't lose money. But you certainly would want to close that out early and also study a little bit more options because you should know that. You should know that if you're paying a debit butterfly, your max risk is the debit that you pay. 
And your max risk is the debit that you pay. Okay. How the hell these investors are getting such $20 and such the price target, that, then that's crazy. Don't listen to other people. Other people have an agenda eruption. People on YouTube and other sources that, that if they're telling you crazy stuff, first of all, they could be right. But more often than not, they've got an agenda to make you think something. And they're, 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 they're either going to try and pump it and then dump it on you. Or they're going to use that as liquidity to fill their short positions on the way down. There's, there's, there's a lot of hidden evil things amongst the internet. That's why people throw in crazy price targets. I've heard Neo to 10,000. You know, I've heard AMC 50K. It's, it's all just an agenda to feed to you. But nobody's going to give like a rational price target on a stock like Target and say, yeah, 300. Like that's, that's, that's boring, but that's realistic. Um, nobody's gonna, you know, I, I remember when square was at in the upper two eighties, people were saying something like 3000, $4,000 a share. And that still can be possible. The thing is, is that there is an agenda as they're feeding those super bullish price targets, insiders sell the shares and then stock tanks. So I'd be uh, very careful with that. Miroslav asks, any opinion on crypto weenie? Yeah. You gonna ride Bitcoin to 130K with us this year? Oh, no no Bitcoin 130K this year. Um, I, I'll, I'll be riding Bitcoin 130K with you five years from now. But uh, I don't know. The, the, I, ho I hope I'm wrong, actually. I hope you get paid. But I do think that Bitcoin can get clapped. Look, it's already, it's already broke, breaking down from this larger bear flag. It has room to do a kickback resistance. It's having a green day. Um, here, let's analyze Bitcoin here. Yeah, that this consolidation for the past few weeks has not been good. You wanted to see a V-shape bounce on Bitcoin. V-shape and then a pullback and then a continuation. Right now we're getting a flag and that just usually means continuation to the downside. So drop bear flag and this could last into july and we might see I, i'm still i'm still under the camp bitcoin 20k short bitcoin 20k before it can hit that 150k could i be wrong yeah that but i i i love you know i can't say i love crypto if i'm not invested into it right <laughs> uh, but i've got ethereum and then just small amounts of altcoins but nothing even worth like wiping my booty with <laughs> um you know in a really bad case bitcoin could see 13k i do think that those are all dip buys um but yeah let's let's i'll, I'll do a conservative flag pull conservative flag pull duplicate Let's assume that it breaks. That was the breakdown point. Yeah. Literally a conservative measured flagpole is 14K. I see like, I feel like crypto, I'm seeing all these crypto commercials and stuff and it, it's cool. I'm glad that people are investing rather than not. But also it's tricky because it's, it's the time when everybody's investing that sometimes investing is the least lucrative. Oh, poor crypto people. I hope they get paid. Uh, if, 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 and again, don't let my bearishness stop you from buying it and living your dreams or hoping. Because I would feel horrible if uh, Bitcoin did moonshot and then I said it was going to get clapped. Because, you know, some people do make large financial decisions based off what I say. Even though none of this is financial advice. I don't want to tell you what to buy or what to sell. You do you. But also, if you're asking for my opinion, that is my opinion. I do think we could still stay in the flag based off this weekly hammer candle. We might stay in this flag through July. I would say I'd be bullish crypto again if 
Bitcoin can hold above 60k. Not then then you'll start you'll, you'll start uh having me nibble a little bit. And of course, that means I could be give, giving up a 42% upside, but for now I think there's too many bag holders in crypto to allow that to happen. Your strategy with Nia has been benefiting you and a couple of buddies of mine so freaking exponentially well. Nice. What is your uh, strategy? Next time I'd re record your screen and, and tell me what you've learned. That can be uh, helpful. So market really pressing uh, edges, the edge, the upper edge of the expected move in a short fashion. That's why call options were starting to pay. Hmm. You set up the Amazon's Echo to listen for our dogs barking. I had to disable it halfway through the first day because I was getting tons of messages. Oh, yes. Shout out to Wesley Reynolds over here. Woot, woot. Wesley Reynolds. Yes. Shout out to Wesley Reynolds here in the chat. This stream brought to you by Wesley Reynolds. Well, technically yesterday's stream was brought to you by Wesley Reynolds, but it carries over into today. How are you doing, Wesley Reynolds? Thanks for being here. I love you. Wesley Reynolds says, in the current political environment, I would stay away from anything China. The risk of things getting a lot worse before it gets better keeps climbing. Yeah, I, I would agree. You know, there's 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 a opportunity cost with everything. There's constant evaluations of risk versus reward. China stocks, for those of you guys that don't know, they offer potentially a lot of upside. However, there's a lot of risks with them. They could get delisted. There could be a bunch of shenanigans. They could have been lying about their books. They could be, you know, they, they could be you know, lying on the accounting side of things. So there's a lot of shenanigans going on with it. And yeah, I'd say there's so many stocks in the world. Why? It, because there's so many stocks in the world, why would anybody, you know, I, I, I agree. Why, why focus too much energy on them? You can just plow some money in something that doesn't have as much risk. But yeah, good to see you, Wesley Reynolds. Thank you so much for supporting the stream yesterday. If you guys are are asking why why these stream how these streams are free, you can thank people like Wesley Reynolds and thank the members, thank everybody that hit the subscribe and commented. Eric Shaw says AMC stepping into a massive gamma squeeze. Is it? Let's check it out. AMC stepping into a massive gamma squeeze. That doesn't look like a gamma squeeze to me. Up two percent. Jagged uptrend. That doesn't look like a gamma squeeze to me. That just looks like a goofy channel. Interesting. Yesterday, bear flag. And this is why patterns don't matter too much, but they're there in case they do play out. But break above the bear flag, jab back in, make a lower low, chop around. AMC's just choppy on the day. Again, AMC, a you know, on a good day, a $3 stock. Um, man, it's gotten clapped more than I thought it was ever going to get clapped. I thought it got slaughtered when it was down at 30, but the apes held it up and they dropped it, held it up and they dropped it. Yeah. Yeah. Neo being the fastest growing EV stock, and after watching for more than a couple hundred hours, the stock does, you can easily predict when to buy and when to sell for these type of 5 to 10% changes. Interesting. You can easily predict. I like that. Well, hey, keep it up. Neo just broke yesterday's low, but then shot back up. One of these days, Neo is going to break a low, and then it's going to not come back. Well, I, I, not, I shouldn't say it's going to. It's just more, more likely to. But right now, a flag pattern that will resolve most likely to the upside, especially at the market. The market's like uh, got the, sh the shorts by the nuts right now. <laughs> Good.
Good to see you, Ryan. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed yesterday's breakdown for you, right? I'm assuming you guys watched yesterday's video, right? How do I send it to you? Discord. Discord's uh, the best way to reach me. Discord. Market's still going though. Pamp into the upside. Four four three zero. Oh. It's like it's like uh, the the last few days are just like let's well, rope a dope whip saw it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's this thing in the U.S. to doing to get rid of a lot of Chinese stocks, but thankfully Neo and every other EV stock is not listed to be removed. Thank God, but that can change. What if some shenanigans come about and we go to war with China or something? That would be awful. Yeah, we need. Why were you bullish on PLTR in 20s when you say it's overvalued at 12? When did you hear me say I was bullish on PLTR in 20s? First of all, things change. Second of all, why are you still bullish? Third of all, valuation concerns. Fourth of all, if I ever was bullish on PLTR, it's probably because I grabbed a dip at 24 and I was expecting it to go higher. It did go higher, but then it broke a bear flag. Once something breaks down, I took turn from bull to bear. See, a lot of people have a tough time switching, and I do too on some things. Sometimes I just, I'm just i a little bit more stubborn than I should be, but you need to flip from bull to bear. Why, why, why is everything so black and white? Why, why pledge your allegiance to Palantir? Palantir didn't pledge its allegiance to you when, when it decided to drop. The stock don't care. Kathy Wood got clapped too. It didn't care that Kathy Wood was in. The market doesn't care whether you're bullish or bearish, so you've got to make that rational decision to be able to change your mind when logical things are telling you that bad things are coming. You can even, you, you literally see me in PLTR calls from the 22 area up to the 24 to the 26 area, and then you literally see me shorting the shit out of Palantir in Palantir puts once we start to break down yet again. So the, the reason I, I emphasize this is, first of all, people are, it would be terrible if you weren't allowed to change your mind on a stock or a company at all. That would be terrible. That would be awful. Could you imagine like, oh, I bought this. Well, you got it. bullish for life. <laughs> no, 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 no changing. No, no, no opinions. Uh, can, you know, that's it. That, only, only up from here. <laughs> you need to be more open-minded. It's, it's one of the most crucial play. The stock market is one of the most necessary places where you need to have, as they say, brain neural plasticity, the ability to change your mind, the ability to think creatively, think in different ways, be open-minded. There are no rights and wrongs. We just, there are no rules to this universe. I can flip-flop as many times as I want. I'm bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish. But I'm, I'm going to try and stick to, with conviction for as long as possible. That's the whole goal. Stick with conviction for as long as possible. And then when the facts change, you've got to change as well. Does that make sense? I own PLTR in the 20s. Yep, and guess what? I cut it. I cut PLTR. <laughs> Guess what? I'm very happy I did. I saved myself 60% on my money and I was able to deploy it in many other areas and pay bills. <laughs> yes. So I heard the other day from apparently a big well-known investor says General Motors and... Bank of America are two stocks that are very good for long-term holdings. Would this be liable? And again, there's no right or wrong. Only time will tell whether they were and did become good holdings. I like General Motors a little bit more than Bank of America. I'm not a big fan of the banks, but even then, General Motors is getting clapped as well. What happened to General Motors? Used to be doing so well. 
I don't think either of them are great. Honestly, the best investment is yourself. Everybody is so worried about all these, the next best, best stock. The next best stock is you, okay? The next best, best stock is you. Other than that though, I would say GM, General Motors. Yeah, it's okay. It's slightly better than, I, I'd give it like a C. Not the worst investment, not the best investment. Bank of America, I'd give it like a C minus. Not the worst investment, certainly not great. You can do better. Don't you wanna do amazing? Okay, your biggest, yeah, so you can change from bearish to bullish on PLTR as time goes on. Yeah, and I'm likely not gonna change to bullish again, ever again. And the reason I turn bearish on PLTR is there are so many bulls. If there's way too many bullish people and I see that there's people all in, guess what? When too many people are all in and everybody's bullish, that's when we can have some of the biggest drops because everybody that's bought, everybody that's wanted to buy has already bought. That's when demand starts to get fizzled out. Okay, that's, that's, that's the critical point. So I have the technical chart telling me bear flag, bear here, I'm gonna clear the drawing set. I've got the technical chart telling me bear flag. I've got a breakout on volume, it's on earnings. Everybody's all in, everybody's bullish PLTR. That's what creates some of the w nastiest sell-offs. And now the question becomes now, is it, I, I guess I like it better here than at, in the 20s, but I, I, I think that there's just better investments overall. There's just better places to, to shove your money, you know? Yeah, uh, Miroslav's biggest winner of the day, DNA and GTLB. Biggest loser, RX, RX, and Verve. Let's check out DNA. DNA. By the way, target equilibrium. DNA. Jinko Bioworks, nice good move. Up 8%. Still getting clapped, though. But yeah, really good move. As long as it's stair steps, higher highs, higher lows. Good to go. Spy, it's 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 tricky because it's pressing and extended into supply, so it can it can dig into there. Tesla just made a new high of the day after the initial rejection. Target equilibrium high, low, lower high, lower low, lower high, higher low. Hmm. Interesting. People don't get how I trade when I switch a lot. Oh my goodness. We got Wesley Reynolds over here supporting the stream. Oh yeah. Oh, we need it. We need to we need to play like a like a pampet song for Wesley Reynolds. And let's pull up NVIDIA for you. Yeah. Went long on Vida hit 217. So far killing it. What are your thoughts for rest of week, Greg? A slow, what do you think, Naomi, for rest of week? <laughs> okay, went long and NVIDIA hit 217 so far, killing it. Yeah, you are killing it. NVIDIA just broke out again. Okay, so real short term right now, it's breaking out. First of all, beautiful consolidation. Breaking out, uh, let's, let's get some resistance levels for you. Beautiful, beautiful move. So I also covered NVIDIA in yesterday's video. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in it. But as of right now, NVIDIA is pressing higher. It's likely to come into some short-term resistance at 225 to 227. I would, I, I do think that we could see those levels today. So we, we, we hit that support. Next resistance then 230. I think 230. Okay, so here, let's, let me give you a nice good breakdown. So NVIDIA shooting up right now. I expect it to probably continue for the majority of the day, especially as the S&P goes beast mode to the upside. Yeah, so win long in video and hit 217, nice job, nice job. Like literally that's that's a good fair value on the day and you're up quite a bit, up 2.7%, that's a good buy. Okay, 
What do I think? Uh, uh, what do I think, Naomi, for rest of week? <laughs> are you asking Naomi? Or are you asking me? But either way, so in Nvidia, it's probably a dip buy if it comes back to 221. But the market's just going off. 225, it's likely to touch today and reach today. My goodness, the market's still going. 44340. Yeah. Really a nice move to the upside. Regardless, there's Nvidia. 22312. 225 today. I'm gonna say that again, just to remind. We might even see something like 227, 228. I would just trail this one up and see if it can touch and fill the gap at 230. In terms of NVIDIA though, on the daily time frame, I wouldn't expect too much higher prices from 230, okay? So I, would, I wouldn't get greedy on it. I would, I, I would um, min target, I would try out 225. A max target, you could go 230. Maybe if you really want to, you could go something like 242, 243. Go check out yesterday's video where I break down NVIDIA in depth. So go over, check out this video, Game Plan, XLE, XLC. We talked about relative strength on the S&P sectors. Hit the like button on your way in. And uh, check this out, Wesley Reynolds. Yeah, Naomi, Naomi uh, day trades NVIDIA a lot. She's, she's a master at day trading NVIDIA. That's how she makes her living. Okay, let's see here. Check that out. Yeah, 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 okay, so you have several contracts. Yeah, check check that video and scroll over to when I talk about NVIDIA. It'll be the third stock that I talk about. Amazon, NVIDIA. Man, the market's still just pamping. It's just done nothing but go straight up today. That It is a little bit more bullish than I thought it was going to be. It means there's a lot of short sellers in the market, it looks like. Very interesting. Still very happy with the way I traded Target as well. Um, but yeah, so NVIDIA. So if I had a big position, Wesley Reynolds, I would check this out. I would, um, well, you have a big position right now, assuming. Let's just assume you've got four contracts. The more the better, because then you can lag out. But I would take maybe one off right there, just one because you're in from a great price, 217. What that does is that gives you more space for NVIDIA to pull back and do its uptrend. Um, but it looks like it. you might not even need to take one off. It might just flag break that up. Um, I would take off another at 225. And that I would just trail it. You know, so, so, so you know what I mean by that? Like, okay, you know that as long as NVIDIA is above 220, it's still just in an uptrend and bears are underwater. So you can just trail that. So trail it, trail stops work very well when short sellers are in big doo-doo. When short sellers are in big doo-doo, that's when you get those monster squeezes. And they're still going. They're still looking for more. So that that might continue. <clears throat> yeah, I would... um. <clears throat> do you have... It, do you have option spreads enabled? I would sell 230 calls. That's an easy way of doing things because then you hedge off a lot of your theta and then you get paid to take profits at that 230 level, which was that gap fill resistance. So. Yeah. Appreciate it. So, okay. Yeah, Honda Moose, I love that one here. Be sure to you guys to join the Discord. Join our Discord. Join my friends' Discords over here as well. I need to adjust some of these. <laughs> really, I'd say these are the top three. I don't even look in this one. I do go in Backpack Traders one, though. But ch check out check out the meme section. <laughs> I love this one. It's uh it's uh it's it's the it's it's like uh what the hobbit with smog. It's like uh man, how... greedy it says greedy I, I wanna read this Gre okay here we go. Greedy beast I've come to collect what's
Let's just say owed. I've come to collect what's owed. <laughs> and the guy says, fool, I've no treasure. Liar. <laughs> See for yourself. My assets are all tied up in the market. <laughs> My vast wealth is merely hypothetical. And in fact, a poor wretch like me must be eligible for a tax credit. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, eligible, <laughs> eligible for a tax credit. You have to pay, you have to pay a credit cards current month's spendings that same month interesting all oh, the market uh certainly uh covering some ground today did, did, did they just they just say short squeeze biden has told obama he's running again oh i thought he i thought it was saying obama told biden he's running again but i was like wait a second two terms uh, we, we don't need to get political in the chat, but w would you guys prefer Obama or Biden as a uh, president? Would you guys prefer Obama or Biden as president? If you had to choose between those two. Yeah, yeah, if you're uh, 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 going, uh, utilize the Discord's resources. There's the, the we, ha we have a general chat. You can hang out, you can talk. Utilize it. It's very important to just collaborate and talk with other traders, right? <laughs> this one, this one, this one, this one is a funny meme. <laughs> Karen trigger. <laughs> Mask or musk? <laughs> <clears throat> David Lazos. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I probably shouldn't have even brought that up. <laughs> Do a poll. Biden running again as a, as a mummy? You mean Obama, right? The market's still just going straight up. Straight up. We're, pre we're gonna press 445, the upper edge of resistance. This, uh, this breakout... <clears throat> I'm looking at this. They, they 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 might they, they might go go ahead and gulp this. Right, I'm gonna put the XLF up here. XLY. Let's put that up here. I don't want to hear unlimited ticks. Gosh, I'm almost tempted to take a short on the market, but I'm just gonna enjoy my tendies. <clears throat> it's just a norm created by George Washington. Interesting. Yeah, politics and history were uh, were my two subjects that I didn't spend too much time on. Spent a lot of time in math and science. Hey, there's the transports hitting that 250. So transports are taken off today. <clears throat> That's what's really helping out the market. It's interesting because it... Cause it Last week, I was trading the transports to the long side, but it just not enough time. We can see some of these options. Is there anything good on that? Okay. 4.88 to 6.6. .6. Yeah, it's not the best. There's been better. There's been worse. Tesla's really going beast mode, so... Yes, that is that the daily higher low. That's no longer a bear flag unless, of course, it doesn't hold the daily candle. Now the market's finally pulling back just a wee bit. Yeah, I shouldn't have even brought up uh, political debates. That was dumb of me. <laughs> I didn't say debate. I just, just was spurring some conversation. It's good to see you guys are uh, 
participating, right? Yeah, the hotel stocks seem to be doing really well lately. Any thoughts on getting in for the long term, specifically HMR? Yes, and first, let me go to the bathroom. And this will be the first time that I've gone to the bathroom this morning. There was a joke yesterday that I might have pre-diabetes because I peed once. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go to the bathroom. I must relinquish me bladder. Enjoy Parker sleeping. Enjoy Parker sleeping. Oh. Sorry, bathroom girl's coming in. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Tis I, bathroom girl. I only appear when <clears throat> we must pee. I heard that that Greg uh, is talking politics over here. <laughs> if you had to choose one, I heard the question. <clears throat> Let's just pet, pet a pet. Instead of talking politics on YouTube, I think YouTube enjoys cats a lot more than politics. Save the politics for the news channels. We're a stock trading channel here. It's all cats all the time. Look at how peaceful this is. <laughs> Just a live stream of me petting Parker for hours and hours because he will stay here all day only getting up when he has to use the litter box or wants to eat something. So handsome, I know. He is such a handsome man. The most handsomest man I know. He keeps up with his grooming, unlike someone who needs a haircut. Parker's hair is always perfectly groomed. <clears throat> How do you keep it so at such a perfect length, Parker? You were a bad president if other countries love you. I don't know if that's the case. Where do you get that? <clears throat> if that's the case, would that mean that all presidents have been bad? Because I feel like all presidents have had other countries leaders <clears throat> like them or at least display to the public a liking of them who knows if it was real or not <laughs> it could have been fake love <clears throat> all right no more no more um political stuff if you say anything political, it's getting hidden or deleted. Poo, post it in the Discord. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a debate channel specifically for this. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, 
Debate Central. It looks like it got changed too. So yeah, check it out. Some good stuff in there. <clears throat> I'm fed up. I'm too. David, David says Meanie started a tornado and ran into the basement. Not the basement, the bathroom. <laughs> Hours, all night. I don't even think you, I don't even think he peed when he woke up this morning. Like I said, eruption to the discord, to the discord, debate central right here. Right here. All your wildest debate dreams can come true. Oh my gosh, I just closed all the tabs. How did that happen? Okay. <clears throat> It's no fun if it doesn't piss someone off. Well, that depends on how you define fun. I don't know if I enjoy making people angry. That's not my definition of fun. <laughs> Parker's looking majestic today. What? The, I think it's fine. It's a... Thank you for taking over, Bryce. I appreciate it. Okay. Do 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 do. Okay. Do 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 do. There are some things you guys can say. There are some things you can't. I literally just wanted to go pee. And if you're gonna be an asshole, I will wreck you. It's fine. I love you still. It's just some short-term tough love. Dash says, TGT, what about it? It kind of reached that target, that profit target. 245 was my number. 244.86 was the high. That looks pretty good to me. Yep, uh, okay. You, you know, yeah, yeah, you guys, if you, if you ever want to talk about healthy debates, go to the debate central slash healthy debate. There's a designated place for it. I'm sorry. I thought I could uh, just uh, make a quick little comment. Just, it was just a simple one word answer. We won't be doing any of those political polls anymore. <laughs> you can do, we can do those political polls though uh, in, in here in the healthy debate section there's designated areas for it just as if you've got a cute pet show me a cute pet pic just as if you've got uh, some you know some fitness pictures or anything any sports that you're doing show me right over here in fitness fast and in flex uh you know okay you know just show me some some pc and, and gaming yes i, I i've uh, i've done that with some of those wine glasses yeah, stress, stress relief. Do, 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 do. Yeah, check, check out all this stuff. Post me some funny memes. Yeah, don't be weird. <laughs> yeah, go, go hang out with Eruption in the voice channel. That's always a blast. Hang out, share, show, share, share some stock charts. 
we might do one of those things where we do like a like a zoom call and compare and contrast different stock charts go while you're at it subscribe to backpack trader okay so literally go over to backpack traders youtube channel hit subscribe amazing people over there with current events up to date on what's going on in the market hit subscribe hit the bell it's not a brick house <laughs> But yeah, target that is a flat top resistance that could break out, but it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, yeah. Netflix, a good uh, pump. Netflix has earnings today. Netflix expected to move higher or lower by $36. Remember when Netflix was $700 a share and now it's cut in half? Here, we'll do some... Uh, Stuff. Hey, good to see you, Peter Ransom. So it'll Adobe. Nice. Yeah. A-D-B-E. A-D-B-E. Adobe. Yeah. And hey, nice good stuff. Wow. Did you just uh, catch it right at support? Because Adobe's giving, been getting shafted. Netflix, though, expecting a $36 expected move. What are you guys expecting from Netflix? Here, I'm going to do some of these polls. Oh, yeah. Thank you, James Kim. I was going to answer the, the hotel stocks questions and people in the chat decided to be immature. <laughs> okay, here. Let's see now. Hold on. on. Netflix earnings reaction. Up down sideways less than a ten dollar move down would be minus I'll just say something like that okay and let's check out the yeah, let's check out the hotel stocks Really well, any thoughts on getting over long term, especially H and Mar? Uh, long term, they're not my favorite, but sh for the next year, they might be good. Let's check out uh, H. Is this the, okay, this is Hyatt. Oh, yeah, we stayed in a Hyatt hotel. It was actually really nice. Yeah, higher lows, flat top. I like it. Yeah. Today, having a nice, good green day. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd, uh, I'd be bullish it. It's not exactly a trading stock, but just park your cash in it and expect sideways to slightly higher and an appreciation on H. Mm. Yeah, where is, uh, where is Michael? Okay, 50% of you guys say up, 50% say down. Okay, now it's starting to split sideways, less than a $10 move. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, so yeah, so yeah I, I, I think that, yeah, this sector is, is pretty good. Let's check out the Marriott, M-A-R. I shorted the Marriott uh, during, during COVID. That was actually a really good trade. Stock went from 150 down to 46. Stock dropped 67%. Um, higher lows, higher highs. I'd expect it to probably visit the higher highs. Uh, Hyatt looks like it. Uh, H has more uh, meat on the bone than Marriott, in my humble opinion. So check out if it back tests 180, could be a potential buy area. Potential. Uh, you have a safety net as well at 172. If it does sell off deeper than that. So yeah, I like it. Good stuff.
So market really trending on the day. We could see some some upper some upper moves here pressing on the market. So be careful. In Netflix to 420, Peter Hansom says. Okay. Yeah, it, it totally could. It totally could. Nvidia did make that higher high. Will it continue though? Market looks like it really wants to press that 445 level. So, hmm, upside weighted iron condors, perhaps. Upside weighted iron condors. There's the market pamping. So please vote in the poll if you're checking it out. If you're looking for Netflix earnings. What's your, what's your vote on what you think Netflix will do? I'm gathering sentiment analysis right now. Netflix may not get there at the stock split. <laughs> they need, I think every stock should just be like $100. <laughs> And then if you get over, you just do a stock split. Just keep resetting your life over and over. Just give me more shares. I can't get filled on the Spy Iron Condor. There's not enough uh, credit to be yielded. Um, but when there's a big move like this, you guys, when there's a big move like this, draw your retracements. And those can give you a better entry point. So 441.30 would be a better dip buy on the SPY than aggressively going for a breakout up there. Do, 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 do. And so, yeah, that concludes this morning's trade. How, how did uh, Roblox end up trading today? I was curious. That was the number one short setup in terms of all of this. Yeah, literally, <laughs> Rob even Roblox is getting some love. So not really many sh any short ideas worked. But, uh, of course, all the long setups worked very well. Transports. Oh, the Russell went off. See, the Russell today, IWM, a little bit stronger than the S&P. And remember, we were looking at that and saw that there is skew. Now, the IWM still still can get clapped. It's, this is nothing but just a short-term rally and an overall downtrend, at least recently. Bulls are hoping for a higher low pivot. Bears are hoping that supply takes over. Yeah, IWM's 170. The thing is, it just might take a long time. That's all. It just might take a long time. Whatever that does. Whatever what does. One on GTLB and Upstart today. Nice. Let's check out GTLB. GTLB from Euroslav. Daily, not too healthy. Recently, though, a nice potential reversal. Can it get going, though? Five-minute flag. Nice, good move. Yeah, up 8%. 
As long as it's holding those pivots, 53-26, she's good to go. She's good to go to the upside. GTLB, and then what else do we have? Upstart, UPST. Oh, uh, Upstart went on a nice good move. Man, did you just buy it near the lows, Miroslav? Because Upstart, it's difficult to be winning on this one. You, you must have had a sniper entry. I love it. Yeah, stock is up 7% today. Nice good move. Uh... 91 is the next area of resistance. Could run into short-term resistance as well. Upstart, I'd be careful on that one. That one, I'd expect actually a breakdown in the in the next coming weeks and or months. Well, let's check out Verve, V-E-R-V. -E Verve, nice, 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 nice. Yeah, I mean, that one made a lower low. This one's just a steady eddy downtrend. Potentially on its way to zero. Not just, it just needs to, to pick up volume. Verve Therapeutics reports durable and well-tolerated editing of Ange PTL3 gene out. Ooh. To more than 20 months in non-human primates for potential treatment of astrochlorosis. Cardiovascular. Wow. Biotechnology company pioneering a new approach to the care of cardiovascular di disease with single course gene editing medicines. You know, the best way to treat ASCVD is to lower disease-causing low-density lipoprotein, the LDL cholesterol. Yep. The LDL is referred to in in a lot of the in a lot of the fitness industry as bad cholesterol, the LDL. And then there's HDL. That is considered the good cholesterol. And you want your ratio of HDL to LDL to be good. To be higher than the ratio of the LDL to the HDL. You buy a lot of stocks so the, so the top two look nice. But most days in the next bag, today is a slightly better average. Oh, that's fine. That's fine, Miroslav. Hey. The thing is, sometimes it just takes time, too, for an investment to play out. Anyone know what the offer code does when opening an account through Thinkorswim? Ah, uh, yes. Well, the, the offer code is if you deposit, if you plan on depositing, I believe it is 3000 if, if you plan on depositing 3000 or more, um, if, I, if, if you let me enter in your, your name and your email... I believe we each get plus 50 bucks. We each get $50. If you join M1 Finance, you get $50. If you join Weeble, you get some money. Honestly, if you're looking for just quick, straight cash, you can just harvest a few brokerage accounts. But yeah, check. I would say check, check it out. Check out M1 Finance. Check out Thinkorswim. If you plan on depositing over 3 k yeah, that's the that's the move. Well, spies pamping. <laughs> She's going for it.
puts on LDL, <laughs> not me, says, yep. Yeah, you're tired of Robin Hood and Weeble? I like Thinkersum. It's 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 decent. Um it's it's not the best for fast trading though. I think Trade Station wins that section. Trade Station wins that. But still need to get uh, develop and get better at it. Nice good chug a log higher. Roku is ripping. Yeah, Roku was a trade setup in the morning that we talked about. Roku over 112. Nice, good stuff. But yeah, that, I mean, that's a tricky one. Yeah. That just makes Roku underneath 105, 106 an even better short if it uh, re-rotates back down there but yeah nice good move today but yeah that that entry of 112 stop underneath 109 110 two point stop loss two percent risk and a four percent reward nice good stuff press the like button to make the market keep going up all oh, the markets had uh the markets already had it's uh, it's Phil. <laughs> you want more upside? Nah, I'm just kidding. It looks pretty good. Peter, <laughs> Peter puts Bane, the most bullish feline on the planet. Chief diplomat of the bovine feline union. <laughs> so I could exit CVX cover calls for a profit. 177.50 strike expires next Friday. Let's check out CVX for you, Ryan. CVX. Okay, hey, CVX uh, rotated down today. Nice, good stuff. So a little bit of stock rotation. Looks like we might see the pullback now on CVX down to the 170 area. Um, I would actually hold on to that covered call. It sounds crazy. Not based off this chart formation, hold on to that covered call. And I would only buy it back if CVX breaks 172.28. But other than that, you're, you're in a good position, I'd say. Good stuff. Yeah, what are my thoughts for a Netflix Iron Condor? I like it. I like the Netflix Iron Condor. I do it weighted towards the upside. NFLX. I do a weighted Iron Condor towards the upside. Um, well, depends. The expected move, $36. What's the next resistance? Well, it's $30 away. So, yeah, Iron Condor would be good because resistance is ahead for Netflix. Resistance is ahead. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would, uh, I would do something like, uh, sell the, th here, let me construct it. Here, uh, where should I construct it? We'll construct it right over here. NFLX. Mostly because it's easier for people to see. Yeah, let's go to trade Netflix options. Um, I would do something like this. Oh, I like it. Two. Actually, I might enter this one. Sell the 370 call. Buy the 372.50 call to protect. That's a total credit of 72. But then I would weight this towards the upside just a wee bit. Do something like sell the 355 put. Buy the 352.50 put to protect. Yeah, that's a great iron condor. Max loss of $37. 
max profit of 213 and you want Netflix you want Netflix to be above 355 but beneath 370 I like that one right there Netflix iron condor it's weighted towards the upside I'm going to enter one of these just one and risking let's see if I can get 2.15 if I could that would be so cool Risking $35 to make $215. Probably won't get filled right there. Maybe I can get 210 though. 210 would be good. 2.1, 210. Yeah, filled. Filled at 210. That's that's a great deal, in my opinion. So basically what what I what I just did right there is. I said, Netflix, just go up just a little bit. Go up just a little bit. This is my profit zone. This is my profit box right here. It's the green box. That's a good, that's a good uh, profit box right there. And then this is the, the loss boxes. Anything above or beneath that zone. So, yeah. Good, good, uh, good uh, call out, Diesel. So that, that, that's my thoughts on the Netflix Iron Condor. So good that I, I entered one. And I'm not expecting to get the full profit, but I do think I can make 100% on my money. I think I can make 40, 50 bucks. But who knows? The risk is in the, the premium. Yeah, eruption. Uh, like I said, I don't have a code. I have to here. I'll check this right here. Oh, I have an offer code. Interesting. Here, actually, let me let me quick check. I don't think that there is a code that I can do here. Let me go to. Be a narrow trade. Log on in. The market's pamping still. Still going up. Let's see here. I don't. Yeah, let me. Yeah, offer code. Yeah, let's 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 check this out. Offer code. I need to know that there's a such thing. Yeah, let's go this. Yeah, you know, referral. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, in terms of thinkorswim, I can only see the the referral code where you 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 have, you have the you add your friend's first name, your la their last name, and then their email address. And if they deposit three thousand dollars, each person gets fifty bucks. Hmm, I don't think so. You just bought the same iron condor. You mean you sold the same iron condor because you're collecting a credit? A buy side iron condor can be confused with a strangle. A buy side strangle. Okay. Yeah, 
I don't think so. Yeah, promotions or any promotions? No, there are not. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to get back to you on that because I don't think that you can really do that. But yeah, how's it going, you guys? Are you learning a lot today? I sure hope so. Yeah, I wonder, is Netflix going to rally to 420 on 420? Time will tell. That is interesting, though. Yeah, let's, let's, I actually am curious, though. TD Ameritrade offer code. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that will really take place. You're gonna nibble on Path, Twilio, and D Dog for your ten year portfolio. Oh, Miroslav, I hope those t uh, those pay out. But you know, I guess it's a better deal here than earlier. But that's that's a strong downtrend. That's likely to continue for a long time. TWLO. And the reason I'm saying this is not to make you so that you don't invest in them. If you think they're the ones, they're the ones. But I do think that there's significant risks with them. Short term, they can bounce, I think, because they are really oversold. So I guess, yeah, if you like if you like it as an investment, might as well grab it for a short term trade and see how far it can go, right? But also, I'll just be careful. Nibble now, then dollar cost average over time. Eh, I'm glad you have a plan. Twilio and then D-Dog. Oh. D-Dog actually is not as bad as I thought it was. D-Dog actually looks the most constructive. But, ah, uh, yes. <laughs> The experience is better for everyone when you're fully committed to the moment. Hmm. You complete me is the, is the most damaging phrase to come out of Hollywood. No one can complete you. As we learn from the chapter on I'll be happy when syndrome... No partner, job, degree, or number of zeros in your bank account can complete you. Only you can complete you. Wow. Lots of great stuff. If you haven't heard about mirror neurons yet, get ready. Scientists say that mirror neurons are going to do for psychology what unlocking the mystery of DNA did for biology. Ooh. Think of mirror neurons as tiny boomerangs emitted from your brain that go and dance with your lover's mirror neurons and then report back. Mirror neurons allow you to intuit what your partner is feeling. They are why you cringe if you watch someone getting hurt and smile back automatically when someone smiles at you. Mirror neurons are one of the reasons <laughs> porn is a multi-billion dollar industry. Simply watching someone else being pleasured can create pleasure in your brain. They are essentially the biological basis for empathy. Yeah, they could bring out yearly subscriptions at a discount. Yeah, that could be a good news catalyst. Netflix. 
That could be good. I'm down for that. They're flooding into the stock right now. You complete me, mini me. Two was to complete yourself, either increase speed towards your goals or reduce the scope of your goals. Yep. You complete me, mini me. <laughs> Meditation as foreplay. I'll have to read this with Bryce. I'll uh, ear dog this section. Ah. Uh, yeah, how's it going, everyone? Is there any uh, stocks that I can break down for you guys? Right now, we, uh, we have a uh, pool time scheduled at high noon. So until then, we're just kind of hanging out. The trading was nice and simple today. Every day needs to be like today, where it's just nice and simple. IWM, really the whipsaw yesterday and today, just straight bull move. I do think that it gets clapped longer term, but for now it probably pumps short term. For now she pumps. Yeah, the point of meditation is to get good at life. That's the point of meditation. Okay, thoughts on AMD and NVIDIA for dip buys? Yeah, let's check it out. And for what, a dip buy for a day trade, swing trade, or investment? Big difference between all of them. Um, I'm assuming that you probably mean investment. You could, short term. AMD, weaker than NVIDIA. AMD got cratered. It could rally potentially all the way back up to 105. So maybe it has like a 10% move in it. I would say wait. Wait for this bottom zone like 86. Depends on your time horizon. Keep an eye on the S&P as well. That's a critical part. Uh, but the same thing with NVIDIA, NVDA. I broke down NVIDIA really in depth for Wesley Reynolds, and I broke down NVIDIA in yesterday's video. But I do think it's consolidating potentially for another move higher up to 225.44, as long as it holds that 221 former breakout area. Um, yeah. If it doesn't hold, though, NVIDIA could get clapped. But for now, it looks like it wants to gear up for another move. Any thoughts on an Iron Condor for Tesla earnings? Oh, yeah, Diesel. Go watch, uh, go watch yesterday's video. Talk about the Tesla Iron Condor. Go check it out. Uh, right over here. Dude, you can do a wide iron condor. I have a slightly bearish iron condor on Tesla if you want to see my strikes. Here, let me pull up my strikes for you. TSLA, Tesla. Right here. So here are my strikes. You can see there's on the call side, selling the 950 call, buying the 955 call. That's already pretty much clapped, so that's probably not even going to. 
Yeah. And then on the put side... On the put side, I've got this one. And actually, on the put side, I can literally almost buy back these puts. Sell put. Buy put. Yeah. I actually buy that back. I might actually even do that. But I don't think that that downside iron condor is going to hit now. But a neutral iron condor is going to do pretty well. But I actually am going to buy that back. Because now I get all that buying power back. Do I? I should. Maybe not actually because I still have the collateral. Yeah, okay. I still do have the collateral. But now... Looks like I've just got a slightly bearish iron condor. Or I just got a bear call credit spread now. But yeah, I, if I were to reinstitute the iron condor on Tesla, I would, on TSLA, if I were to just look at Tesla as it is right now, gosh, the expected move should have widened for Tesla. So it, it, it is not worth it to do an iron condor, in my opinion, anymore. It was yesterday based off what the market was pricing in and the implied volatility. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the iron condor because the, the implied volatility is not high enough anymore. I, I just feel like a strangle, a strangle isn't really worth it either. Time will tell. Why are stocks up today? Different sectors are pushing and pulling, Robbie. So demand outweighed supply on the market. And some things like the transports went off today. So the transports now sitting in the 250s. IYT. 239. 239 up to 251. Not too bad. You're up like 5K with just shares. Yeah, the, well, the market went on a big short squeeze. Big, big short squeeze. It was, it was a rope-a-dope yesterday, and then boom, today, beast mode to the upside. And this was just short-term stuff, though, Robbie. I do think that there's still a lot of trouble in the market, but we could now see something like 447 since we're pressing the edge of the expected move today. So today is the day for call options. Call options paid. And they're still they're still going. They're still paying. They're going for more. Like that might be a breakout right there, but it's a choppy lunch session. It's possible to access different states of consciousness. We're the only species that can do this at will. The mind thinks involuntarily, just like the heart beats involuntarily. Amazon is ripping. You have 10 Amazon shares. Wow, Robbie, that's awesome. That's goals right there. 3,200 uh, coming in for Amazon. 3,200. Six, five, seven, five Neo stonk shares. Oh boy. Be careful on Neo. I hope, the, I hope that pays you though, Robbie. Thoughts on Facebook? Yeah, it's having a good day. Potentially a daily higher low set. Uh, Facebook probably going to rally up to something like 222. I wouldn't expect it to go too much higher than 222, but short term, that does yield sideways to slightly higher. Um, yeah, I don't expect Facebook really to ever be above 300 again. Uh, yeah, short term sideways to slightly higher, just like the market. And there you go. There's a higher high on the day, 44394. Nice, good stuff. 
big volume breakout as well. And again, higher high straight into a pullback. <laughs> Those are my thoughts on Facebook. What are your thoughts on Facebook? It's going, it's doing very well. This is a, as this is a pattern to memorize, by the way, if you ever see this pattern right here, left shoulder head dips into support, consolidates, that creates the right shoulder, breaks out over the high of the day, volume slowly increases and the trend continues. Rally, flag, rally, flag, rally, flag, chug a lug on higher. That's good stuff for Facebook. It's starting to go parabolic as well as short sellers have their undies in a bundle. Thanks, that's the same thing you saw as Facebook. Nice, Dash, I like it. I like it. That's good. We finna go to the moon with Neo. Yeah, I, I, I really do hope you guys get paid on Neo. Um, the, the thing about Neo that I see is that I think it can potentially turn into a Palantir where there's too many bullish people, too many people all in and that have loaded the boat. And then some bearish uh, stock chart formations, clap the stock, okay? Can Neo get over 20 bucks per share? It can, oh yeah. I'd be surprised if it didn't actually. In fact, I think Neo still probably has one more push up, potentially up to 22 even before rejecting. Again, if you guys watched yesterday's video and it, there's no hate, at all involved with this. I do think that Neo sees 10 before it sees something like 37 or 36. But anything can happen. I've been wrong before, but Neo it, Neo reminds me of Palantir where, gosh, it, you know, the fundamentals look great. The numbers look great. Everything just makes sense, but the stock can still get clapped because there's too many people all in on it. Easily one hundred dollars plus by twenty twenty five. It, I, you know, it could happen. Yeah, twenty twenty five. That's a long time from now. That's three years from now. Think of what the world might be like three years from now. How do you imagine the world three years from now? Oh yeah, I love hearing your insight too, Dash. You will hate the world three years from now? Oh no. Well, you surely will if you decide that. Good to see you, tool worker. It's hanging well. <laughs> I hate EVs, I love gas. Gas will never leave us. Man, I, I, I should have been all along the IYT right now. Either way, a good move. It's going off today. Weenie, what do you think Amazon and Google are going to trade like into their stock splits? That's why I bought Amazon and Google last week. Hey, first of all, you, you caught a, uh, a good move if you bought prior to stock split announcement. They announced the stock split and Amazon gapped up massively. I think that, um, I think go for the next like month or so, they could see a little bit of higher prices, but I still think that they can get clapped actually, Robbie. I'd be very surprised if Amazon started to, uh, started to break this pivot up here. 
up here at 3400 Yeah, uh, similar thing with Google. And by the way, Robbie, I love Google. Uh, the thing is, though, is that the stock price can still get destroyed. And we could see Google down at, you know, 1800 1800 Google. But a good, uh, good uptrend today. You know, you, you can take a look at some of the contracts that traded today. They're cracked. But yeah, two thousand dollars turns into three thousand dollars. Yeah, it's I've seen better. I've seen worse. Yeah, it depends on how close Putin walks to Windows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, there will be a three years from now. Yeah, there will be a future, Keller. Do you know that there's hundreds of different styles of meditation? Mindfulness, meditation, and manifesting. Wow, Twitter going up for you. <laughs> I, you know, I actually am a little bit surprised that Twitter is rewarding buyers of this whole frenzy. A lot of the times the stock market will punish you for jumping on a trend, especially jumping on a trend after a big gap up. I don't know on Twitter. I mean, it's a flag. Does it continue higher? It continues higher if Twitter breaks today's high. But if Twitter can't hold 47.78, it could roll. You like Amazon stock? It's been trading in a range for like two years. Yeah. Yep, Amazon's been there for a while. It's been distributing. Spy still kind of chug-a-lugging on higher. And uh, excuse me, but I must go to the bathroom for the second time today. Do I have pre-diabetes? You decide. <laughs> Thank you guys for voting in the Netflix poll. I'm gonna play the Pamp 2 song. Damn it. 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 Damn it.
Classic. Have you found a good spot in your house to meditate? I mean, I like my yoga room. It gets a lot of sunlight. Pellerk says that Pamp It Too should be could be a workout song. It could. Did you enjoy that dancing, Parker? Parker looks like a completely different cat on this camera. Maybe it's also the angle in which you get to see him. How's everyone doing? Your goal is to finish it by the end of the day. Yeah. S&P is still to, just squeezing on up. Just read it out loud. That's what I was Alien thinking of Parker. Alien. Alien. food. Alien Park. Parker, are you from space? Or the future? <laughs> He's so contemplative. Alien. Alien. Always getting annoyed. Cause I, I get that him. thing out of my face. He's like meow ha ha. I don't get it. I don't get that. Keller. Elaborate. Yeah, get him. Poke him. Give him a massage. <laughs> he hates that. Just kidding. <laughs> Grab his chin. Chin rubs. Oh, like, mwah, ha, ha, ha. I get it. Now it's like a meow, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> like an evil laugh. I gotcha. I gotcha. Are you off work today, Keller? You usually don't show up until power hour. 
maybe. Now he's confused. Oh, he's been shooketh enough. He must now leave. There he goes. Where's Peter? There he goes. Tell everyone to post their tickers. The stream will be going for 15 more minutes. Tell everyone to post their tickers. Post your tickers, everyone. We're gonna, you're going to end the poll. Thumb the vote, end the poll in one minute. Pin a message that says, <laughs> post your tickers. Did you hear that? Post your tickers, everyone. Post your tickers. Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're off. Nice. It's a good schedule. Right, do you work weekends then, too? Ending the poll in three, two, one. Rotate the cat. Rotate. Peter, you're on shift duty. Peter, no. <laughs> he runs away. He's like, I don't want to work today. Everybody's got to work, Peter. Some of us have easier jobs. Some of us have harder jobs. GMM says, hi, Weenie and gang. How are you doing? Pretty good. Good to see you, Sally Lou, GMM. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Bye, Peter. Oh, he's going to get Parker. Oh. It's beat down time. <laughs> it's beating time. <laughs> it's fight time. Time to fight. Hand payment system. Using the hand payment system. Yeah, what is that? Like, you scan your palm to pay? Or what? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, Chris Miller's got uh, got some tickers for me. Oh, yeah. Um, Take a seat. Okay. Switch. I have a feeling I'm gonna absolutely love this book. Got some water, please. Cleanse your palate. Okay, let's get to work right here. Chris Miller, let's, let's bang these out. So AMD, and, and all these, I, I did a breakdown earlier in the stream, but AMD, uh, relatively weak. There's better stocks to buy. Uh, looks like it could get a short-term bounce, probably up to the 103, maybe 105 area. So that's my thoughts on AMD, 103, 105. NVDA, same thing. I think it can probably get up to like the 230 level. Right now it's like consolidating. And look, it just made a new high, pulling back now. Let's see if it makes another new high as well. So time will tell on that one. S&P is slowly chug-a-lugging on higher. Um, it might it might have an, an end of uh, April bullishness, you know. It's, it's, I don't think we'll be seeing spy four twenty for four twenty. It was it was close. It, it could have been spy four twenty for four twenty, but the buyers stepped in. So that's uh, AMD, Nvidia, uh, SQ. SQ is an interesting one. I have not actually broken it down. There's an initial morning breakout today on SQ over one twenty one twenty six. Now it's pressing one twenty five. I think similar thing. I think SQ can probably get up into the lower to mid 133s, assuming that the SPY holds up. And so it really comes down to what's the SPY up to? SPY probably could get as high as 447 now since it's busting through the edge of the expected move. Although, hey, maybe we get a pullback short term and then it squeezes on higher. Okay, um... Yeah, Amazon, S similar thing. If you watched uh, yesterday's video, I broke down Amazon. Short term, we get, we're get we likely to get a pop. We got a pop short term, nice good stuff. 
And uh, Amazon, 3,200 is likely an area of resistance. And it, it even could be a uh, short term as soon as now. But Amazon, not super bullish, but short term. It, it's one of those things where it's like short term bullish, medium term bearish. We can probably uh, we, we, we can probably press a little bit higher, but in the long run, we, we're probably going to see Amazon back at 2,800 by the end of the year. So that's uh, the, the Amazon, Facebook, FB. FB, same thing. Facebook, we can probably see a something like 221.67, sideways to slightly higher for Facebook, as long as today's low holds at 210. Uh, let's check out Roku. Roku, R-O-K-U. Roku, today, talked about the trade setup over 112. Stop goes underneath 110. Nice good move all the way up to 118. Uh, this move, similar to the other's stocks, 122.85 would be that a stretch target for Roku. So potentially another 5% in it over the next month or so. Uh, and again, bearish if it breaks today's low, 108. Like Roku... I'm going to short the crap out of it if it breaks 108. I'm more interested in the shorts and letting the shorts set up rather than chase long right up here. Does that make sense? Uh, let's check out Tesla. We broke down Tesla. Tesla iron condors. You know, sell something like the 10, 1080 calls. Sell something like the... I don't know how much... I don't know if I'd... Yeah. You could sell puts on the iron condor side. I I would just wait on Tesla. Wait till after earnings, but iron condors should pay. There there it's iron condors are most likely to pay. There is no should. The market just is. Uh Tesla, Netflix same thing. Netflix did a bullish iron condor weighted towards the upside. I thought the expected move was a slightly too high, so when that happens, I like to do a weighted iron condor. So if Netflix has a slightly positive earnings report, you know, I'm risking $40 to make 210. Am I going to make the full 210? Probably not, but maybe I'll make something like 80 bucks. And I like that. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got here? We got Coinbase over here. Oh, Chris, uh, Chris Miller. You, you go the extra mile to be here. I'm going to go the extra mile to break down every single one for you. Coinbase over here. Lower highs, lower lows. Coinbase just made a lower low, but not a lot of follow through. So we got to think wedge or channel because we made a lower low and didn't crater through the floor. So now we, we got a channel. So we, we might get a snap back back to the midpoint of the range for Coinbase. Oh. And that would be something like 171, 172. Shout out to Chris Miller over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Chris Miller. Supporting the stream. Being positive and respectful. Thank you so much. I'll happily break down all your stocks, Chris Miller. <laughs> but yeah, Coinbase, I'd, I'd expect it to probably run into some troubles prior to 170. I don't know if Coinbase goes much higher than 170. But off of this move, it could get a short-term little bounce. Um, but I expect sideways to slightly higher. I'm not going to expect a V vertical type of bounce. Just a weak support type of bounce. Um, so that is coin. Let's check out AMC and GME. AMC, bearish longer term. Short term, just getting a little, little, little steady eddy uptrend. Uh, it's starting to distribute a little bit up here in the 18s, I wouldn't be surprised to see if it if it got back to the top end of the range, 19. I don't expect a breakout, though, of 19. So AMC selling 19 calls could be the way to go if it extends into 19. Otherwise, it's right at the midpoint of the range. No real edge right there for AMC. GameStop, yesterday talked about the GameStop short from 145. GameStop dropped 6% since then now it's climbing back higher gamestop i probably same thing i'd expect it to stay within a range stay be, stay beneath 156 but st do something like stay above 141.50 above 141.50 but 
beneath 151. Uh, longer term, though, bearish. I mean, it's almost free money to short GameStop up here, but the options chain is just predicting a drop, so it's difficult to capitalize. And that's GME and AMC. Yeah, Twitter doing great. Tesla's doing good today as well, GMM. Siley Lou asks, what's your prediction on the SPY? Sideways to slightly higher. Um, short term, it actually could get a pullback, but... Like, okay, so like, I guess defining our times, time ranges is, is important. So on like the one minute time frame, we could see a, a pullback, even all the way down to 441.30. Same thing for the hourly. Four hour, that is a decent bar that could take the SPY, you know, 447, 448, especially since we got, did it so quickly. That means we have tons of space to pull back and find a dip buyers that can continue at higher. Yeah, daily time frame. Not a lot of volume on this update. So not a lot of volume on the up days. Lots of volume on the down days. It's just kind of like a floater type of grind higher. So I'd expect that probably for the next two, three weeks maybe. Two, three weeks of sideways to slightly higher. Same thing with the Q's poo shiesty. QQQ looks bullish. No. Let me know what time frame you're looking at. Are you looking at the tick chart or are you looking at the monthly or something in between? Yeah, the church lady was say from, Sat from the Saturday Night Live. Isn't that special? Yeah, shout out to Chris, Chris Miller. Yeah, Pepper Jack Shack says cents make dollars. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Soon the planned digital central bank coin will be the new currency. Yeah. IWM. IWM, that's a very interesting question. IWM, Russell 2000, short term going on a tear. Uh, short term, there's short term resistance at 203. So coming on up at 203. And it could pr press as high as 212. Longer term, though, I do expect the IWM to probably come down to that 180 level and potentially even down to that 170. 170 IWM by end of year. But short term, pressing higher, and it probably will continue for a little bit. Yep, okay, so... That's IWM. Thoughts on Microsoft? Um, really getting weighed down by the 10-year. It's having a green day, but not that good of a green day, if you ask me. Um, it's at a fair value, an area of support. It might get a rally and fill the gap up at 296. However, I am expecting Microsoft over the longer run to get clapped. Probably down to 250s, maybe even lower. Yeah, we could see Microsoft. We could see Microsoft underneath 200 by the end of the year. 34% drop, maybe not that much. Longer term, wait for a better deal. Short term, could get a bounce. And you'd be lucky to see this thing up at 296, but more likely it stalls somewhere at the 290s. Pays a good dividend. So at least you get paid as you hold shares of it. Okay, so that's thoughts on Microsoft. Uh, let's check out Rivian, R-I-V-N, Rivian. Bearish, lower highs, lower lows. I expect this thing to just go nowhere. If the market presses higher, cool. If the market presses lower, cool. But more often than not, I'd expect Rivian in the long run to probably eclipse this low down here at 33. Stock was 180 bucks earlier. Jeez. What an amazing move. So that's Rivian. Uh, you know, just really n n nothing. It's just a big bear flag. Maybe it could be bullish if it breaks above and holds above 42. But that's a tough cookie because when you start getting this oversold, 
it takes a lot to get the trends back up and some of these up moves can be massive ah yeah nothing too special about rivian lmt cost microsoft ttd xlk yeah let's check out lmt lockheed martin oh wow i didn't even know they reported earnings lmt earnings look at these levels right here nice good uh opening range pennant break to the upside that's a good one right there memorize that setup you buy over 463 stop loss goes underneath low of day nice good move stair stepping down um short term lmt i don't see anything too crazy I don't expect it to break out. I don't expect it to really break down. It's really bullish if it can break oh, today's high. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, shout out to Explore over here. Hey, thank you so much for supporting the stream. Let's get right to it. Let's go. Let's break down T and LABU short term. No problem, Explore. Hey, thank you so much for, for supporting the stream. That really goes a long way. Let's check out T, T Mobile. Or AT&T, sorry. AT&T. Stock is up on the day. A nice good uh, ascending triangle. Flat top at that 1986. Uh, we have earnings coming up on 421. So we do have earnings. So generally breaking down stocks before earnings is a little bit tricky because anything can happen. But most likely they're predicting that we maybe just tap the $20 a share level. And don't go too much higher than that. We're not even expected to touch 20.50. So basically, market's saying, yeah, we got room up to like 20.20, .20, but it's not expected to really go too much higher from here. Um, on the downside, however, we could see 1950, even as low as 19, and that's just the bottom end of the flag. So basically, not really a whole lot of range expected on AT&T, and it usually doesn't do a whole lot of range. Uh, pays a good dividend, $0.27 cents a share. That's a pretty good dividend for the price of the stock. That's really cool. But I'd expect uh, AT&T to maybe just go sideways to slightly higher in front of its report, and then it's going to report, and we're either going to see it up at that 20.50 or we're going to see it at 19 I couldn't tell you which way. I'm not an AT&T fundamental expert. Um, there's worse stocks out there. There's also better stocks out there. I do like how you get paid to hold on to this one. So that's kind of my thought process behind it. You at least get paid and it's a better deal now than it was earlier. However, ask yourself, why is it a better deal now? Why is it a lower price than it was earlier? Does somebody know something that we don't? Long term, I don't know if AT&T is going to be one of the main players. You know, imagine 100 years in the future. Is AT&T your stock? Probably not, but it'll pay you along the way. So that's my thoughts on AT&T. Let me know if you want anything more specific on that. Uh, let's check out LABU. And I believe this is an ETF. This is, a, this is the... This is the S&P Biotech bull miner, right? This this should be this should be uh, correlated to what XBI is the base ETF. So the biotech sector, biotech sector bearish. Look at this beautiful descending triangle. Beautiful. Descending triangle breakdown, kickback rally breakdown. Not really going anywhere. LABU it's up on the day. Can it continue? Probably. I'm still bearish the biotech sector, though. Um, you, it's relatively weak. You, that means on rallies, you generally want to sell into them. Sell into the rallies, not buy into the rallies. They completed the spinoff recently on what? Um, AT&T. XBI. Hmm. Short term can get a bounce. I, I I wouldn't, you know, in terms of LABU, generally, first of all, you want me to break down the base ETF. You don't want me to break down the leverage DTF. Um, LABU, though, still could probably get up to that 1368 this week, next week. I wouldn't get too bullish on it, though. So biotech, weak. And I, know, and I know that's probably not something you want to hear, but I spend a lot of time analyzing different sectors, noting relative strength, relative weakness. 
And it's just it's just like the MJ sector. MJ sector weak. There's very few strong stuff in this market. Let's put it at that. There's very few strong sectors and names in this market. Yeah, that's why the price went down. They completed the spinoff. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there you go. That's why the price went down. So do you expect the price to return? What if it comes back down again? In terms of AT&T, though, it is steadily steadily trending. Higher highs, higher lows. 1964 is the flat top. Like I said, I, I, I would go with the shares. Wait till after the earnings report. Let me know if you need any updates, though, Explore. I'm more than happy to update you on any of these stocks. Thank you so much for supporting the stream. Yeah, faked everyone out. Looked like supports are broken. And are finally topping. Maybe get one more good bounce. We could. Yeah, um, let's get to LMT, Costco. We, so we broke down LMT. LMT bullish above 474. Neutral right now. Slightly bearish underneath 455. Costco. Costco. Having a good day. Ran into 580. I was looking for just a little bit lower, but it did pretty well. Costco probably goes sideways to slightly higher, just like Target. Watch out for a breakdown candle high at 600. So 600 is going to be a lot of resistance on Costco. Microsoft, we broke down earlier. Go rewind the stream. Hope you're doing well, Diesel. TTD, Trade Desk. Lower highs, lower lows. Lower low, not a lot of follow through, just an awkward channel. I don't expect this to go too much higher or too much lower. It'd be a lucky to get this up at 70, but that would likely be some resistance. I don't think that it goes much lower than 58. And then let's check out XLK, the tech sector, part of the S&P. Having a good day today, but how long does that hold? I don't know. Probably not a lot. I would be cautious and wait on the XLK. I would be cautious and wait. I, I, I wouldn't touch the XLK anyway, shape. It's one of the weaker sectors. Even if it rallies, 152.44, that's going to be some resistance. It reminds me of the XLC, the communications. Although XLC having a good day today, I do think that it still can shift out of favor. So just waiting for that rally on the XLC up to 69 before I short it. No problem, Explorer. Thank you for supporting the stream. I'm more than happy to offer analysis for all y'all good people. All y'all good folk. And we have more likes than viewers. That's the weenie trade stream. Yeah, 24 cents a T were assigned to WBD. Okay. WBD. Securities Broker Dealer Index. Oh, okay. Huh. I'm sorry, that's XBD. WBD. There we go. Oh, yeah, Warner, Warner Brothers. I, need, I should uh, try and get some acting gigs for Warner Brothers. Yeah, PLTR is strong today. Yep. Yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of green on the watch list. But I would look I would double check your watch list if you do have a watch list and see is my stock or my watch list what stocks on the watch list are green, what stocks on the watch list are red. AMR, please we need. Oh yeah, sure thing, GMM. Sure thing. AMR. Interesting. Breakout on the weekly. Today having its first red day, but buyers bought the dip so far. As long as that low holds, that's actually kind of bullish. 
I don't know if it can eclipse the highs all that much. Unless the S&P is ripping, then AMR is going to get going. But actually, no, I think this, this looks constructive. Because look, we have a bottom wick. That level is tested, confirmed, go higher. Backfill of the gap, tested, confirmed, go higher. Gap up, backfill the gap, tested, confirmed, go higher. Today, gap down, backfill the gap, rip higher. If the if this candle closes like this, if if AMR closes above 155, I'd say that's a win for the bulls, and we can see sideways to slightly higher. I wouldn't expect a crazy vertical rip, although option chain expected move says by the end of May we could see something like as high as 180. 180 touch of 180. All of growth is green. Yep. You're thinking of August 150 puts. If you're going to grab the puts, wait. I would say just wait. Wait for a more clear, defined level, GMM. I think that if you let this thing rally and then start to roll over, get catch it on the back side. Right now, it's still the front side of the move, I'd say. And when you're buying puts, you generally want to wait for the back side of the move. If you want to short it, I would say sell bear call credit spreads if you want to catch the front side of the move. That way you get paid on implied volatility and on time. And then once it goes to the backside, then you play the puts. Because then you can grab like, let's say like let's say it rallies up to like 180. And then it starts to reject and it's starting to roll over. And it's let's say it's now at 170. Buy some like 170 strike puts. And if this thing rolls back down to 140... You're, you're getting paid 3K, three grand per contract. That's, I think that's the way to do it. In my humble opinion, that's the way to do it. All right, everyone. Any last questions, comments, concerns, funny jokes, stocks to break down? If not, I'm going to get ready for pool time. Get to the gym, get in shape. Do what you can. Do all that can be done each and every day. It's very important. Be productive. Be a good human. Make the world a better place. The cats love you. I love you. Good to see you, Photonees. Photonees says, just a question. If you look at Bitcoin daily chart, you had a trend line drawn since the big dump. And it bounces on that line every time, but... Seems to get into a channel. Yep, this is, it's a bigger bear flag. Forward slash BTC, Bitcoin. Yep, this is the this is the Bitcoin daily chart. Flagpole, consolidation. So we actually we we just hit the low end of consolidation. We could bounce again, and test something like 50k again. Reject, bounce, reject. But I do expect that Bitcoin gets clapped longer term. There's a lot of fees with crypto, and I, I could play these little bounces and stuff, but I'd rather just trade stocks. It's just, it's just a better way of doing it. But yeah, 13K. Does that answer your question on <laughs> uh, Bitcoin or is that a little bit more ambiguous? Is that what you mean? What you say? I hope not. Yeah. Tesla has a wall 1112 and his target to retest 880 area. Yeah, I think it can test 880 as well. But if the market's pushing higher, market's pushing higher, you know? Or is it a big bear flag for me? Yeah, it, it, yeah. I'm waiting to buy the dip crypto, 20K down to 13K. But short term, it looks like it can rally, you know. Is there any, has there been a big stretch? Not really. I mean, let's, let's, let's do this retracement from here, measured up to the high. Yeah. 55k would be a stretch target to the upside. That would be a good move too for Bitcoin. 55k. 
And that's a 35% move, so that's no joke. Still, though, there's better ways of doing things. I think. Much better ways of doing things. Hope I can sell in green. Well, photo needs to remember, the market doesn't care about your position. The market just chooses to go up or down regardless of what you have or what you're doing. So you've got to make the rational decision on whether you expect it to go higher or lower from here. Okay? That's the choice you got to make. Do you expect it to go higher or lower from here? Get him, Peter. Get him. Go get him. Peter's like, I'm warm. I don't want to move. <laughs> All right. Any last questions, comments, funny jokes, stock tickers? Let's check out Ford for GMM. F. Ford, a nice breakout today. 3% move. Cool, cool, cool. Short-term resistance right here, right now. But if it can break above and hold above this 1617 area, 1684 is your next level of resistance to test. Ford, I don't expect it to go too much higher than like 18. But I also don't expect it to go too much lower than like 13, which would be a pretty decent drop, but... I've seen worse. I've seen better. Ford got way too overhyped. We got the false breakout, and now we're rolling on over. We just might stay in this type of pattern where it's just like an awkward, goofy channel for a long period of time where it's going to have waves within the waves, but it's just going to be in a channel. Expected move on Netflix earnings, Chris Miller, is 30, $37. And my calculated expected move was $30 based off support and resistance. So based off that fact that the Netflix expected move was $37 and that my range was $30, I decided that an iron condor was the way to go. Yep, it's $37. Just double checking. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I hope the bear flag gets a fake breakdown goes up to new highs. Nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what you would hope for if you're in Bitcoin. I hope it works out. Yeah. Okay. Let's check out Plug for Peter Ransom over here. Plug. Plug actually doing well today. It did get the dip. Hey, Plug. Should have watched, monitored this one a little bit more closely, but Plug did catch uh, an S2 dip buy right over here. Mark those levels pre-market. Nice, good move. Now we got a steady eddy uptrend. As long as plugs above 28, it can uh, test the next resistance, 28.80. I wouldn't get too bullish on plug, but I do think it could uh, get a little bit more continuation, maybe even as high as 29.20. I don't expect plug to break this high of 31.85. So a nice, good move on plug today. Breakout on volume. S2 dip buy based on the pre-market. My number is 2646. Low of day is 2635. So 10 cents off the low of the day, half a percent. So not the best, not the worst. I pride myself on accuracy. Hey, Weenie, do you think the current price of AVGO is an okay entry point for a mid to long-term investment? No. 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 <laughs> That's my answer. 460 maybe. Not 590. I mean, you could. Don't let me stop you. Pays a good dividend. $4.10 per share. It's not my favorite semiconductor. It's not the worst semiconductor. Honestly, I think it could be a short. But that's in time. You thinking 380 by tomorrow? Interesting. I was thinking... Uh, 370, 360. That's my iron condor. The green box is plus 210. Plus 210. The red box is minus 40. The, the, the purple box is minus 40. 
So this is the zone that I'm capturing for Netflix. All right, you guys. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. It was a blast today. A nice and easy trading day. Target just went straight up for us. And that was about it. <laughs> in terms of other stocks, pay attention to relative strength, relative weakness. Join the Discord. Ask me questions there. But Bryce and I have got to go get swimming. I got to get to the pool. Join the Discord. Send me some funny memes. Send me some stock questions. Talk about current events. Make each other better people. Improve. Meditate. You name it. I'm thinking of adding a book section to the Discord as well. That should be a lot of fun. All right, you guys. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. And I've got to go. Yep, the volume on SPY is very low. Well said. It might break year lows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it very well will. I think it will break year lows. Yep. Tensico. I do think it will break year lows. Yep. All right, you guys. Bye-bye. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Peter says join the Discord, okay? Join the Discord. Look, I grabbed his fat. Join the Discord. <laughs> uh, Peter's eyes. <laughs> Swim time. Alien cat. <laughs> Be on the lookout for aliens today, okay?